Good evening, I'm Ken Bastida. Dana is off tonight. He was murdered and then set on fire while celebrating his birthday. <laughs> This is Sean Killing from Violence, and you're listening to Metalomania with the Crip. Metal up your ass, brothers and sisters. All right, everyone, what's up? You're here with Steve DiGiorgio, basis of Testament, Death, and many more on Metalomania with the Crypt. Keep it fucking heavy, yo. You're listening to the best Metalomania.live. You are listening to the home of metal, Metalomania.live. Powered by B Squared Inc. Entertainment. Scully and Crypt, you already know.
episode number 203 comes alive with some pigweeds. Some friends of ours out of San Antonio, man. How about that? Hell yeah. Crushing. I love the energy of those motherfuckers. I can listen to them all day. If I'm running out of coffee, I pick up some pigweed and I'm good to go. And uh, shout out to San Antonio, by the way, man. And Texas having a rough week. Texas having a little bit of a rough stretch right now. A little now, cold. So, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Help yourselves out by listening to bands like Pigweed and Frozen Soul and all them kick-ass bands coming yeah, out of the Texas Yeah, get your blood flowing, get your body moving. Yeah, Pigweed can't get your blood flowing. You might need to see a doctor because you're probably dead. <laughs> There's no joke about that. I love that band. Love those dudes. And very fun dudes, man. We, I, you know, go into our archives. You can check out the interview. Very cool guys. Enjoyed speaking with them. That is a brand new single from them, and we dig it. San Antonio Strong, baby. San Antonio Strong. Hell so, yeah. How are you doing tonight, Scully? I'm great, thanks. We are going to have a great show in store for everybody tonight. In fact, I'm getting ready to boot you out for like a whole portion of the show here. Yeah, so, I'm only stepping in for a minute, I guess, here, yeah, guys. So. Yeah. We, we're stacked full of guests again. So last week, we talked to Task Force Toxicator. We talked to a Pupil Slicer. We talked to our main man, Blake Harrison, out of the Pig Destroyer. We had our Forever Songs thing. Man. We got right, a, right, right. Forever Songs. They were good. Yeah, we got a lot of good feedback about that yep. piece. And, you know, we put that piece as a one thing on Utreon, which is a new kind of a YouTube site. Right. You're kind of pushing. Seems to be blowing up. Seems to be good. doing pretty good there. Awesome. So. Yeah, pretty cool. So check us out on Utreon and I like that there's lots YouTube of options and, and platforms. You know, fuck all this one one. Uh, you know, right? Platform. One I've said social platform. media, <laughs> but you know it's fucked up. Like YouTube fucks with us all the time. They've yeah. always got a problem. They've they kicked one of our videos off, and this is this is true. We got a video kicked back once on one of our shows, and they took it down, and it said that would, our show endangered children. Wow. And I've still yet to, I literally responded like, what the fuck are you talking? How, what are you talking about? Seriously, you're going to have to give me more information. <laughs> you can't just tell me that without giving me more right, information about what I did there. Well, yeah. Right. And no, nothing. No response. So, okay, whatever. Fuck you. But wow. it is nice that Utreon seems to be cooler. They seem to be working. They allow you to endanger children. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> Bad joke. Yeah, so yeah I know. It was a good joke. I mean, fuck <laughs> that. It was a metal mania joke, goddammit. So fuck them. If they're in the wrong place if they can take that joke. We live in a world where even your jokes have to be like at, with yeah. the asterisks of the right. end. You got so. to add it. We almost got to add a visual LOL now when you yeah. joke. You know what I mean? It's so. fucking sad. Ridiculous. <laughs> it is ridiculous. But no, we do want to thank everybody. It, we, we're, that seems to be a growing trend happening with the show even. We have a lot of friends coming in to talk metal with us. We yeah. have a lot of topics oh, yeah. we're breaking down with our cool pals. You know, and again, last week we had a lot of fun. Ta Ta Task Force Toxicator, great band. Pupil Slicer, great band. You know, Blake Harrison from uh, Pig Destroyer, we've had him. He's almost a regular at this point coming in and talking metal with us. So, oh, yeah. Support those bands. Support those bands, man. And Pigweed, who we open the show with tonight, support those bands. Killer. And, you know, tonight we're going to keep that going. I'm getting ready to throw Scully out. We're going to have my main man, Josh, or Macho Frost, as we call him, from Texas Toast Chainsaw Massacre, is going to join us here in just a few minutes. As a matter of fact, literally just a few minutes. Okay. And we're going to break down together our list of the best crossover albums of all time. Me and Josh are going to break that out. Okay, Texas cool. Toast Chainsaw Massacre may even appear on my list. There's a teaser for you. So. Oh, okay. Well, all right. I'm a big fan Couldn't of Josh. Blame you there. Big fan of Josh, big fan of that band, and a big fan of Crossover. As you know, if you hang out with us very often, I talk about it a great deal. It's something I dig. Mm -hmm. You give me some punk and some metal and mix it together, and I'm a happy dude. So <laughs> we're going to yeah. talk about that a lot tonight. Right. And we're also going to have an interview with Angelus Apertrita we're going to talk to tonight, very man. Cool. And Guillermo's coming on to talk with us. And I'm a huge fan of, of that band. 2012, the, the, the call is literally... A huge reason why we do this show. We didn't do this show when that album came out, but you didn't hear that album anywhere. And that is a perfect fucking album. It is a great, it's such a great album. Mm. And it was being played nowhere. And at the time, I remember thinking, man, I, I should have a metal show where shit like that's <laughs> being heard. So. Right, people can hear this shit. That's right. Now they're back. They got Here a self titled go. new one. We're going to talk, and they're talking to us on our show. Nice. So, and then later in the show, we're going to be talking to Corey and Megan. From Casket Robbery, man. Oh, okay. And the, literally two of my favorite new people in the whole wide world. No bullshit. <laughs> I, I enjoy the fuck out of them. We're going to make them regulars if I can. Have them come on and talk some horror and some sci-fi type of bullshit with okay, me. Okay, that works. You know, cool stuff. That cool stuff. right in. Yeah, we're, we're, it's going to be fun. Okay. So I'm going to let you take off. I know you got some shit to do anyway. So yeah. Scully's going to run to the hills. Run to the... Anyway. And um, Josh is going to join us um, again, support Pigweed, and let's bring in Josh and talk a little bit of metal with him. Okay. Ready? Yeah. 
All right, Miss Scully. Come back later, though, right? I'll be back. I'll help you, like, close out the show. How about that? All right. Come say goodnight and send everyone to to bed to their pillows. I'll be chatting. I'll be here all night on the board. So um, as long as Facebook Engage. Yeah, right. Engage. Hey, and again, when Facebook throws us off, when they definitely will at some point, Mm -hmm. go on over to our main site. And catch us on BB Inc. or Metalomania.live or whatever the fuck it is we're on these days. So we'll, sh- we'll <laughs> that, share it. That's good. We'll share it in the Facebook thing. That way you can link on it when Facebook kicks us off. So, uh, all right. Well, let's talk to Josh right now. And I'll see you in a little bit, Scully. Thanks right, for hanging sounds out. Sounds good. Much love, our mistress of metal. Much metal. And here comes Mr. Josh. <laughs> Hey, what's up? This is Thorn from Caustic. If you are a fan of crossover thrash, you should check us out and follow us on Instagram at caustic underscore band. And speaking of crossover thrash, it is now time for the Crypt and Macho Frost countdown of the greatest crossover thrash albums of all time. All right, and we continue to bring in our badass metal friends for this Metalomania thing we do, man, as our boy Macho Frost, as, as we've come to know and love him, at, but my, my boy Josh from Texas Toast, man. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I am kick-ass, man. Glad to be joined by you, sir. Yeah, man. I'm a pleasure having me. And, well, it is a pleasure having you, and and, uh, and I'll tell you, man, we're, we're bringing you in to talk some crossover today, man, one of my favorite subjects. Same. Uh, you and I have talked in the past. Of course, we've had Josh on the show. We were supposed to have a, a meeting in person this past summer, which got fucked by the whole COVID shit. Yeah. I don't even know if it's going to happen this summer, honestly. Well, you, dude, what the fuck, man? Crazy, right? Yeah, that's annoying, but it is, it is what it is. Fucking annoying. Well, keep us in mind, man, because we'll be there. Whatever the fucking green light goes in, we'll be there. For sure. And it'll be a good time. And for those people who out there who don't already know, and you should know because we tell you we love these cats, but if they don't know, introduce yourself to the Metal Maniacs out there, brother. Oh, uh, I'm in the band Texas Toast Chainsaw Massacre and also Infowars, the Grindcore band. Um, I've been in the band for like, I think it's like 10 years or something stupid now. Yeah, fuck yeah, that's good shit. Well, I, I'm a fan of the band. We initially met even because I'm a fan of the band and dragged your ass onto the show oh, shit, I, <laughs> about two years ago, man. Now, you believe that shit? It was, yeah, it was a while ago. I think I've been on twice before. Yeah, yeah. I I believe this is your third or fourth appearance, maybe even. Fuck, I can't keep up, man. I'm a stone metal. I don't so. know. I lose track. <laughs> well, you know, we that's fitting because we're going to talk about one of the more partying aspects of metal today if you don't mind but one of the things that draws me to crossover is you know it's got that party aspect to it it's got that fun aspect to it it fucking doesn't take itself too seriously you know i I, don't get me wrong i do like genres of metal that do those things but i appreciate that about crossover man what 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 was it about this genre that made you a, a crossover head uh the just the speed of it and like the aggression i really draw to like really drew to me and then like i found it in high school and it was all about like municipal waste like as they were coming up and it was just like i don't want to say relevant at the time but it was really going on right when i was like the most impressionable when music was going around like when i was in high school like that's when you find out what you like you know and that's when like municipal waste and lich king and all those guys were coming back and there's the huge thrash resurgence and it was just i don't know if you've ever heard of the band diamond plate before minimally uh they're a thrash band from chicago and they're i don't think they're active anymore but i was in high school with them and like i was in music classes with them and they would always tell me about like cool bands that were coming up because they they were pretty big at the time like conrad um their guitarist is the guest solo on um Office Politics on Lich King's second album. Killer. And, like, he came in, he's like, bro, I just recorded this new solo for Lich King. And I was like, dude, I don't know who that is. And then they, they like, he pretty much turned me on to all of it. And, yeah, it's just been something that is perfect with my personality. And I've just been drawn to it. 
Yeah. Oh, dude. Well, what do you? What comes to mind when you hear the phrase uh, "pizza thrash" or "pizza metal"? Uh, I don't mind it. I, I really just think of like. Honestly, I think of municipal waste right as someone says that, but I know it's like a derogatory term. People use it like. I don't. I, I embrace either. it. I don't care. It doesn't offend me at all. But a lot of like elitists use that as like a you're a pizza thrash band. And it's like okay, like yeah. Oh, oh I say, and what's wrong with that, man? I enjoy the fuck out of it. We'll call it whatever no, the fuck exactly. you want. That's man. how I am too, man. Like, yeah, I, it crazy. drives me nuts when bands are just like super uber serious all the time like they take their pictures in the forest and like yeah. they're all frowny faced like closed fists like oh, like all of our songs are about war and dying it's like no man all of our songs are about movies and wrestling yeah right I'm fucking or space sluts wanna see my blasted gun sluts we all want some sluts you know what I mean? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's good shit, man. Well, we, I, I won't ask you about your love uh, initially of some of the bands you got into. You mentioned Municipal Waste, but we're going to cover a lot of that ground tonight together because I brought you on for you and I to discuss our own versions of the best crossover albums of all time, of course. Mm-hmm. We submitted our lists individually. And just mm-hmm. for a little background for everybody, let me give you a, a we have each uh, five on our list that we that were completely different from one another. We had seven instances where we chose same band but different album, and then we had eight straight up same band, same album choices. So we're, we're, we'll break through those a little bit together. Right on. Fucking a man. Fucking a. We're gonna so we're gonna break down some crossover with my main man Josh from Texas Toast Chainsaw Massacre, which is I'm still, I love the name, brother. I've never I've told you that before <laughs> in the past, but I just love the name, sir. It works for right me. on. It works for me on so many levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always fun when, like, I start a new job or something, and they're like, oh, you play music? I was like, yeah. And they're like, what band do you play in? And it's like, uh, Texas <laughs> Toast Chainsaw Massacre. And they're like, that's really weird. Like, why did you name your band that? It's like, the story's real long. Just like, Except they leave me alone. Right, and take it on at face value, man. It was fun, goddammit. We went with fun. <laughs> and we're going to talk some fun fucking metal tonight, man. I thought we'd start by talking about some of these uh, bands that we, or the, the choices that we had to, that were straight up different from one another. Starting with one of yours, which was Uncle Sam, Uncle Slam, Say Uncle. The debut album from Los Angeles, California crossover band Uncle Slam, released in 1988, brother. Talk to me. Uh, This is a big thank you to Aaron Pankey of Mulder. Uh, He was one of my good friends for a while. Well, he still is a really good friend of mine. But uh, we grew up together, and he would always tell me about Uncle Slam, Uncle Slam, Uncle Slam. And I was like, dude, I don't have no idea who this is. And, like, he showed it to me, and it's Mike Muir from Suicidal Tendencies on vocals, and it's just so good. Like, the riffs, the opening riff to the first song, like, like Weirdo Man, is so heavy. It's ridiculous, and, like, it just keeps that energy the whole album, and it's just so fun to listen to uh, my first word that comes to my mind when I think Uncle Flam is energy, even man, good shit. Absolutely, just those riffs are so thick and like, oh, it's so good. Like I listened to it last night, like after I, we got done talking on Facebook, and like it, it was like a good dude. A lot of these albums I haven't listened to in a really long time because like I listen to so much crossover, I just kind of like not like burnt out on it, but like I like to take breaks on what I listen to. Right. Okay. So like a lot of this stuff I haven't heard in forever, and like going back to it has been real fun. Yeah, man, I like to re-journey back. I, I feel like it goes in cycles for me. I definitely get into where I'm, like, listening to nothing but just thick, heavy-ass, almost depressive shit. I'll get into a doom yeah. cycle. And I almost have to break that with some crossover to get back into good spirit. Oh, know? absolutely. I do that all the time. <laughs> you know, I take my music like I do my drugs, man. You got your build-up shit, you got your bring-it-down shit, you know? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, right on. <laughs> um, well, and uh, Uncle Sam, also another thing that comes to my mind about that band is – 
other than perhaps No Mercy, what band has been more incestuous with suicidal tendencies with kind of members kicking back and forth between the two bands? And yeah, you know, everybody's been in and out of that band. Herrera and fucking Moyer. I mean, so many bands have been, I mean, members have been back and forth between those. Yeah, right on, man. Like, I like that we, uh, there's like, what, three different Mike Muir bands showing up on our list today? Yeah, dude. Mike Muir is getting some love tonight, bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> Well, hey, you know, we we had Blake Harrison on from Pig Destroyer last week, and we did our forever songs, and I mentioned uh-huh. that. And, and silently, I'm going to tell you, Josh, I didn't tell him live, and I'm, all of our listeners are going to learn this from me right now, but he broke my heart twice last week, man. He broke my heart yeah. twice. He insinuated on two, two different occasions, one, that you outgrow Stephen King, and that you outgrow suicidal tendencies, and I died a little inside when he said each thing, sir. Those are two I, of my I've done neither. <laughs> I've outgrown neither, sir. Yeah, same. I, I love Stephen King, and I love suicidal tendencies. Yeah, Until the dude. day I die. Uh, it hurt me a little. Oh, I had a little pain. I had a little indigestion. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, that's good shit. But, yeah, but Mike Murr, though, more for me than any other act in the history of my life, got my teenage angst, man. He got my depression cycles. He got my fucking, you know, inner demons and turmoil. Mom, just get it, Pepsi, please. All I want is Pepsi. And get what get it. You know, and that's no, absolutely. Special relationship from that shit, man. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the one I brought up from my early list that you and I did not, I mean, that you and I chose separately, and I, I got some COC on here. Man, I know that Corrosion of Conformity has kind of morphed into a different band like five different times i guess but for me yeah. technocracy which i realize is an ep i guess i don't know if i broke the rule by choosing a dp but no that's fine i almost did a few times it's hard not to some of the you know the crossover embraces an ep release but um performed in 1982 coc was a straight up punk band i know a lot of people refer to the pepper keenan years as the pepper years or i guess you know the 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 hallmark years of that band i you know i love all of it i even like the bluesy stuff they became later to be honest but Mm -hmm. but technocracy embraced crossover sorry go ahead Mm -hmm. give it to me i'm sorry go ahead (laughs) oh no i just said yeah they're a great band like i i also really like this album it's just not some i coc is one of those bands that like i don't really they're not really my thing like i've seen them a couple times live and it wasn't impressive to me uh, right, and, like, but that album is like a good album. Like I, I have nothing against it. It's a great album. Right on, right on. Coc. It's it's a band that's hard to pinpoint because they've changed. They're, I mean, at this point, you'd almost have to. Their later albums are almost bluesy rock and roll. Even I mean, yeah. You know, it's weird. It's a weird morph that they've gone under. But well, mm-hmm. let's talk about your next choice, which was the worst is yet to come. A 2007 release from Italian crossover band. Hey, I just. Hiatus, yeah, I knew I was going to fuck that title up. But... <laughs> they are, uh, I that album is so incredibly underrated. Like, that band as a whole, I think, is incredibly underrated. Like, I, I never hear anyone talking about them. I, I will confess to being ignorant of this one, sir. This is a new one that you're turning me on to. Give it to me. Uh, I found this album, well, it came out in 2007, so probably found it, like, freshman year of high school. Like, me and my original guitarist of my Texas Toast, uh, Bob Tanji, we were obsessed with this album. Like, it came out of nowhere. We just found it on YouTube in, like, a random, like, you should listen to this. I was like, okay. Let's and, then, like, the first track on that song, like, that album has, like, this incredible intro that builds up to one of the chuggiest like intro riffs I've ever heard. And then the whole album is just like perfect crossover. Like the dude's voice, I don't know his name, but like his voice is awesome. Lorenzo Testa. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) And like, yeah, it's just, it's so good. And I just beg people to listen to this band. I don't know if they're still around. I haven't heard about them in a while. Like, I never hear about this band ever. They have a couple other albums that are also really good. But this is, like, most of the albums on my list are the the album that got me into the band and not necessarily, like, 
the, the best, best album they have, but right like, um, this is the album that I found them on, and I was just absolutely obsessed with it in high school, and I wish I had the chance to see them. I don't know if they've ever played America, but I, if you hear this somehow, please t- please come to Chicago. Yeah, get your ass to Chicago. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I didn't, I was unaware of this band, so I looked them up a little bit as the result of you telling me about them. They apparently were formed in 1996 out of Italy, Lorenzo Testa being the vocalist. Um, their most recent release, and they do are they're listed as active, but their most recent release is 2015's "The Wolves Are Getting Hungry." That um, one's good. That one's a good album. Yeah, fingers crossed, man. I'm gonna dive into this based on your suggestion, sir. So this. Oh, is some... dude, dude, let me know how you like, and the worst is yet to come. Like it's it's got Ed Repka art, man. Like oh yeah, fucking. Oh. It's 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 so good. Everything about it, it's so good. It's so criminally underrated. Oh, well, dude, I can't wait to dive in, brother. I'll, I'll hit them. I'm going to track these motherfuckers down, man, and tell them that you've been <laughs> right on. Do it. Uh, my next choice that we had different was Red Death. Face the pain that plagues your life. Face the pain that then we fell like a knife. I'm super bummed. 2020 was a suck year in a lot of ways, but one of those ways was the end of Red Death as a band. They disbanded. It's a Washington, D.C. Yeah, they- crossover came out of nowhere dude right where the fuck they're just like hey yeah no we want to do other stuff bye I'm yeah like, okay <laughs> power on do what you need to do we we interviewed connor from the band on our show uh when when right as sigma's divine came out actually man and i you're right that came out of nowhere funnily yeah. enough their guitar player will wagstaff left when they did this band he went and joined in force who we just interviewed on the show a couple of weeks ago they just released a brand new album out of uh, richmond virginia more thrashy than crossover that band is incredible they're silly man silly 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 band yeah um but yeah showing force some love but yeah red death man you're right they kind of hit like a brick and then disappeared on us what the fuck Mm -hmm. were you a fan also yeah i saw them at um uh fuck i don't remember the name of the festival now they do a hardcore thing in Chicago every year, and they headlined uh, the same day as Ugly Bones, I think, played, who's my bassist, Viage's other band, so I went to hang out with them, and I don't even think I saw them that day. But, like, uh, uh, yeah, it was, uh, they played then, and uh, they were awesome. Like, they blew me away. I cannot believe, I cannot think of what the name of the festival was. Uh, one of them crossover events, one of them hardcore digs. Yeah. But yeah, that's good shit, man. So how about my main man, Macho Frost? Support Texas Toast Chainsaw Massacre, everybody. And we are just getting started on our conversation about metal for metalheads. And we definitely want to know what you all think. So send in your thoughts on your best crossover metal albums of all time. Let's go to a couple of jams here, and then we will resume with Josh. In fact, in keeping with the theme of Metalomania friends and family, we have a two-pack for you from bands we have been lucky enough to have on the show with us. First up is Gamma Bomb, who Josh and I will talk about a little bit later in the show. Uh, we've had Joe come on and shoot the shit with us, a great dude doing great things and great metal. C Savage from Gamma Bomb is out now. Get it. Enjoy. And then our pal Lee Bartley. Uh, Lee Bartley we had on the show just a couple of weeks ago. He's in, in Malice's Wake. He's in Harlot. Uh, both bands out of Australia. Both bands have a brand new release out. We are going to play a jam from the new Harlot right now for you. You're going to dig it. And uh, go into the archives if you missed that, man. Get into the archives and check out our old shows. If you haven't seen it, it's new to you. All right, so we recommend you check out these bands in the interviews and then come on back. We're going to talk to Josh a little bit. we got a big show in store for everybody, man, so don't go to where. Get settled in and let's do metal. Hey, this is Joe from Gamma Bomb here, and you're listening to Metalomania with The Crypt.
Hey, what's a cock ring? It sounds cool. How should I know? Maybe it's a, a ring with a cock on it. But he said he was wearing it. Action Man Battlefield Casualties. For PTSD Action Man, danger lurks at every turn. Who's that? He never feels safe. Not even in his own home. Ah! Ah! Do what you can to block out the memories. Look, look, look! With no support from HQ, it's up to you to find a way. Looks like we're on our own. <laughs> PTSD Action Man now comes with Thousand Guard Stare Action. With time running out, only you can stop the pain. Let's get out of here. Action Man. Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. This is Lee from Harlot, and you're listening to The Crypt and Scully and Metalomania.
I guess that could be fun. My sweet boy, it's going to be the greatest night of our lives. <laughs> Hey Lab Rats, this is Tom Nando from The Metal Lab, the home of underground metal. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And now, let's get back to the crypt and Macho Frost breakdown of the greatest crossover thrash metal albums of all time. I did come close to putting some Evil Dead on my list, I won't lie. So. Oh, I love Evil Dead. Annihilation of Civilization, 1989, silly, silly release. Oh, it's so good. Like, it's got what? Um, I Just another thing that Aaron Pankey t- turned me. A lot of the albums on this list I learned from Aaron Pankey. Uh, I loved uh, Aaron already then. <laughs> yeah, like if you if you no one has ever listened to uh, Molder before, definitely go check them out. But yeah, um, some may not know the the remnants of Agent Steel and Abattoir came together to make Evil Dead happen. Man, uh, they brought yeah, dude, but like Medina. living, yeah, living good. The riff on that album is in my head literally all the time from that song. Like I always hear that beginning, like like oh, it's ridiculous. I think their guitarist is in body count now. All right, you're right. Uh, oh God damn, he put me on the spot. I don't remember his name. Maybe we'll put a we'll get the fact checker to add that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man. But that there was a legendary band. You know, Dan Flores was in that band. Who mm-hmm. uh, you know from Terror and stuff. I mean, no, I'm pretty sure Evil Dead had like a new a new song or something come out, and it was like all anti masky or something. Oh, really? You know what? Let's look it up while we're chatting here, man. Because uh, I, I am a big Evil Dead guy. I love that band. For people who do not know, that is a fucking thrashy crossover band out of Los Angeles, California. They put out, they got a 2020 release, the United States of Anarchy. So, I mean. Yeah, that, that album is not good. Uh, yeah, that's it shame. is super, like, oh, it's super weird. Like, you can tell that, like, they saw that, like, Demolition Hammer came back and was like, we can do this again and make money. And then they made like the most butt rock thrash album ever. That sucks. Well, you know, I, and then when, when Annihilation of Civilization came out, it was great. The Underworld followed it was great. I didn't think the very highly of the live thing they put out. I forget the name of that, but yeah. Um, but yeah, honestly, it's been kind of downhill. I mean, let's be mm-hmm. honest. Yeah, um, yeah but, but Annihilation. Iron Man, you can't take away what, they, what, what Annihilation was, though. Oh, uh, no, absolutely not. And, yeah, that album's great. I I really wish I kind of see them. They played in Milwaukee a couple of years ago, and I really wanted to go, and I thought that would have been awesome being able to hear some of those riffs live. Ugh. Reformed in 2016, officially still together, so we'll see what happens. We'll see where they go from here. Right on. Oh, uh, my next separate from one another list, man, I went with old Monkey Pup. D. Are you familiar with Monkey Pup? I very vaguely, uh, when uh, with the first time we ever played with Ghoul, Sean came up after uh, after the show to us. He's like, "Hey, you know what? You guys remind me of. You guys remind me of Mucky Pump." I was like, "Okay, man." <laughs> and then I looked, I looked up who they were after that, and I was like, "Okay, this band's sick. Like, I appreciate that." Yeah, oh yeah, dude, I was a huge fan of Mucky Pump. Well, and you know what? Even real quick, man, I gotta mention this. Dude, I, I got to ask you, how old are you, Josh? Uh, 27. Dude, how do you have all these badass 1989 albums on your list, man? You've got an old school heart, man. Uh, yeah, I live with, for 80s thrash metal. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, brother. <laughs> oh, fuck, that's good shit. Well, Monkey Pump, a, a Boy in a Man's World is the album I chose. It's a 1989 release. It kind of blends that perfect hardcore crossover thing together. They were a band that definitely had a lot of fun. They had that like uh, that song, Death by Cholesterol, Eggs, Bacon, Crisco, Butter, It's Gonna Make Your Heart Sputter, you know, the Batman song. And, yeah, you know, they definitely they definitely put down the same energy that we're trying to put out now. 
Yeah, dude. Uh, well, I, hey, there's a reason. I, I, spoiler alert, I do have me a fucking Texas Toast album on my list later. So here, so just a minute. Ridiculous, we'll, but we'll okay. Get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> hey, man, I, I love these. I love those cats. Hey, that's my boy Josh you're talking about. Um, <laughs> But, uh, like, dude, the album, Monkey Pop, the boy, it opens up with that little clip of, like, the couple making out in a car, and he basically tells her her vagina stinks and makes the, you know, the vomit sound. And... Well, it's just that you stink. <laughs> but I love you. You know you're in for a treat right away when you start that fucking Monkey Pop album, man. By the way, yeah. Dude, Puppy come backwards, by the way. What? For those, oh. tri- for those trivia fans out there, Monkey Pup, the name comes from Puppy Come Backwards. Right on. Yeah, I did not know came, that. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fucking nut jobs, man. All right. Uh, you're next on your, your individual list. And another one, man, I, it was hard for me. I almost added Carnivore, really, but it's just so new. But you went with Body Counts in this release. Dracula! But now what's funny, this is a generational thing here because I noticed on your list you listened to this Body Count, Body Count, 1992 release, but you know when it came out, the name of the album was Cop Killer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just used to calling it body count because that's how I have to look it up on, like, everything now. So I'm just, right. that's what it's, it is to me. It was rebranded for the next go, really. But it's funny, that's a generational kind of thing there because people my age will remember it as bi- cop killer. But, if yeah, if you look it up as cop killer, that's not what it is listed as at, th- at this point. So Yeah. That's Pre- pretty wild. But talk to me about the impact of that on you. Oh, dude, uh, I absolutely love body count. And sure. it's – I don't want to discredit them by saying they're way better than they have any right to be. Yeah, they totally are, though. But they totally <laughs> are. Like, they totally if are. you told someone that like Ice T has a metal band, you'd be like, "That's probably terrible." But it's the coolest thing ever. Ever. And like, they're so talented. Like, their guitarist is incredible. And so, every time so I've like seen them, I've I've been able to see them a few times live, and they absolutely command the stage. And Ice T is so cool. And that whole album. It's also like, it's it's very important to me, like politically. Like that album, like speaks to me, like the same way that like a lot of other stuff that I, I like my same political views. Like not to be like preachy about it, but like that album is just like it's super important on so many levels. Like so many levels, yeah, yeah. It's just it's great, and then Cop Killer is such an influential song and such a pop culture like behemoth, like. That, um, what a great word for it yeah man yeah. no shit it hit the world like a bomb well and how funny would it be that this dude would later play a fucking police officer for that <laughs> 20 years on a television show you know what I mean how funny is that in the stand me jail where you're gonna be sucking on something else and what you wanna do and but man at the time still, yeah the fact that he still plays live and plays cop killer and then goes in these um uh yeah so what is it, Law and Order? Yeah, Law and Order SVU. Yes, sir. Fucking silly, dude. It's silly, dude. Dude, I but, remember the first time I ever got to see them was at Mayhem Fest, like right when they came back. And uh, they, I got front row with me and my friend Frank. And uh, like, it was so super cool. And then the last song they played was Cop Killer. And like, oh, you could see all the security guards and like all the cops that were there being like super uncomfortable with it. And it was hilarious. I don't think I'll ever forget that iconic shit dude that's great <laughs> that's great man well you know i remember before the band formed and i remember hearing kind of like in interviews i guess ice cube had professed a love for like slayer and suicidal tendencies and that sort of thing even before he was before the body count thing so yeah you know when it happened it seemed like it, it seemed weird on its surface but man wow fantastic stuff mm-hmm. yeah they're they're super good and i hope no one would like discredit them for like having iced tea in the band and even their new oh. albums have been like super good dude Carnival like, yeah, was you would have thought they would have come back and like made like mediocre stuff because they haven't done it in forever and it was such a one-off like weird thing but dude they're still like they're new like carnivore yeah that album is so good like so good man 
and the song with co- Riley Gale is so good. I mean, that's such a great. Yeah, yeah like their weird covers of like uh, institutionalized, where he's like yelling about Oprah. Just step away from my fucking sandwich. It's like this is so good. So good, dude. <laughs> Bitch, I'm gonna eat my sandwich. Yeah, that's Dude, I, yeah. We used to quote that all the time. Like, <laughs> ridiculous. That's silly, man. That's silly, silly, silly. Uh, well, my other, my other non uh, um, crossover, I guess crossover, a crossover of our lists on our crossover bands. But <laughs> I, I went with the Donner Party, man. The streets, the the Mass graves are filled with the dead. Casualties. The Donner Party, New Jersey pummeling crossover powerhouse, the Donner Party. Train reaction. Um, you know, they they just had aggressive hanging out of their asshole, and I enjoyed the fuck out of that from them. Oh, yeah, they're really good friends of mine. Uh, we were able to play with them while we were on tour a couple years ago, and they are – they're so good. Uh, that's a so band good. that I was turned on to by Lich King a while, a while ago. Yeah, and I, um, game, I almost put them on our li- on my list too, like Pizza Patrol. Like I have so much weird pizza mitt merch from them, and they totally embrace like the pizza thrash thing. And they're all super cool dudes, and like that band is incredible. And I wow. hope some like people listening to this will check them out because they absolutely deserve it. Deserve it, big man. And dude, Chain Reaction is just ridiculous, ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Start to finish, ridiculousness. So all right, well, we got two more that were on our separate list, man. Let's start with yours, which was Dr. Living Dead's 2011 self-titled release. Um, still active, man. Their most recent release was 2017's Cosmic Conqueror, which I also thought was a great release. Um, mm-hmm. Talk to me. Talk to me about the silliness that is Dr. Living Dead. I absolutely adore Dr. Living Dead. They they have that suicidal tendencies, like their vocal style. Like they talk about psycho and like they're very much a suicidal like love like love letter to suicidal and so like true. Mike here. And, and the style and everything, yeah. Yeah, like it's it's so good and the riffs is uh, incredible, like the guitar tone is super good like they have like that gang chant like that suicidal gang chant that they do oh, yeah. like i, I don't want to like they're a great band on their own like uh, like even without like the suicidal stuff like they've they've changed vocalists recently right and uh, like they're still really good um Silly. Our band, like, i really wish would come to america i used to bug them on facebook all the time and be like, hey, like you guys should come to the states, and they're like, if you book it, like we'll show up. And I was like, don't play with me because I'll do it. Yeah, you'll be a Toastomania before you know it, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's that's another band I found in high school. And um, oh wait, no, no, they uh, I was shown them by uh, Mac Ramberg, our my old guitarist. Uh, he's super into them, and uh, Fun, I'm yeah. just glad that. They're still doing good music. Cholos and, and, and skeleton masks, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, the masks are so cool, too. Like, everything about that band is awesome. And I love all their, like, um, especially on uh, the, the first album. They have so many, like, they have, like, a kindergarten cop song and, like, a diehard song and, like, gremlins. And, like, it, they're just, they're movie nerds. Like, we Pop culture and, freaks, like, baby. Yeah, I yeah love like, that's, that's an influence on us, too, so. We'd be remiss in our duties of talking about crossover if we didn't mention that even. I mean, pro- it, one of the things about crossover is definitely it's embracing of cop- pop culture. And it's kind of – well, I guess embrace is the wrong word. It's it's parodying of pop culture is a better way to put it, I guess, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Tripping. Tripping shit, man. Well, my, my last one that wasn't on your list, and it should have been, was – I don't know if you ever heard of these guys before, but there's this band out of Chicago called Texas Toast Chainsaw Massacre. Don't have any acts if I want the cream Don't need money, your lungs to rain Dude, our babe, they know our money Never forget, tell death to us party and in 2015, yeah. they put out this Till Death to Us Party thing And dude, I was like, where the fuck did this come from? What the fuck? You know, <laughs> I love it, brother, I'm a big fan 
Thank you. I can't believe that was six years ago already. I do, can you, right? I know. What the fuck? You know, well, and for those who don't know, we go back a little bit. We played you guys a bunch on the show. You know, we 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 made some of your holiday songs a centerpiece to one of our holiday shows we did even a few years ago. So. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But uh, we we really appreciate it, man. Like, we're so thankful. <laughs> well, we're fans, man. I, I love Ridiculous, brother. I embrace Ridiculous, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely what we were going for. Like, that was so long ago. Like, uh, crazy. Yeah, we were. Uh, I will. First of all, it's like almost an entirely different lineup than what I have now. Yeah, you guys and do some changing of lineups, man. We do pretty frequently. I I think honestly, every I think last year was the first year in like five or six years that we didn't change a single member of the band. Wow. But we also played one show, so. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah, easy to do when you got, uh, you know, much, not much on the plate. Yeah. Fuck. But, God like, it, ho- get- hopefully our new one will come out this year, and I think it's better than the last one. I am, I'm, dude, I have you on tape right now. You're being recorded, brother, so I'm going <laughs> to bring these words back on you at some point. It's It's literally, we have, like, we haven't been doing nothing for six years, like, a lot has happened, but, like, a lot of the song, like, it's been written multiple times, like, over the few years. Like, it started as soon as the first album came out, we immediately started writing the second one. And then we wrote, like, five or six songs, and then we had a bunch of lineup changes, and then, like, I moved to Wisconsin for a few years, and then COVID happened, and, like, but it's all completely written. It's, like, mostly recorded. All the drums are done. Like, guitars are being done, and then, like, the bass is almost done. And, like, then it's just me, and then we send it off to Brian from Lich King, who's going to mix it for us, and then it should be out. Like, I keep saying that. I've been saying that for three years now. It'll be out this year, but they should be out this year. <laughs> All right, man. I'm going to come back on you. I, I, I'll Every now and again, I'm just going to take a clip from this and send it to you on Facebook or something. You know? <laughs> it has been X many days since yeah. Josh said <laughs> Let's go! Oh, also, it's called Super Turbo. I should have said that. Oh, <laughs> Awesome. It's, uh, okay. called, it's called Super Turbo. Yeah, it's a uh, it's about it's a video game themed. It's got it's kind of a concept album, kind of not. Like there are songs on the album that deal with the same like running theme of like this hellish video game run by the devil, and like um, but it it's also cut with uh just a bunch of stupid movie stuff about like RoboCop and this movie called Tokyo Gore Police. And there's a Godzilla song, and we're going to have, uh, like, on the Godzilla song, we're going to have uh, guest vocals by Jordan Farrow of Oxygen Destroyer. And um, our, uh, the last song on the album is called Game Over, and we're going to have some guest vocals from uh, Jestor of Ghoul. You so, know, we've we, talked about my love of Ghoul before, so... I, I have a very, very big love for that band, and I'm very appreciative that I could call them friends of mine, which is something I never would have thought I would be able to say. Yeah, super nice, man. Super badass. That Hey, if, if none of the other shit fucking... I tell people all the time, if none of the other shit pans out, I fucking got this dude, Josh, that I get to talk metal with, so fuck it. <laughs> it's worth it for I'm that. I'm down any time, man. <laughs> well, great guests make great times, and great times are what we aim for here at Metalomania. Our crossover chat resumes shortly, but let's break some things to some cathartic demise out of Canada with this stellar debut release. That's right, debut. Get your drink going. For power from the album In Absence, get it now, and we will hit you with an uppercut right behind that with Blood Runs Cold from Russia. They got a hardcore feel to them. It kind of fits perfectly with our topic for tonight, if you don't mind my saying. And we love it. Get you some. Pain Resistance is the title track we're going to play from it right now and happens to also be the name of my autobiography. So enjoy it and come on back for more with Macho Frost on the other side of these jams. And it's 2021. Put your thumbs in. No thumbs. All right, no, you see thumbs? Lay your hands on my staff. Gross. And say my name so my powers may flow through you.
Feel it in my nuts. You and your nuts. I've had a man's hairy ball since I was eight. It's the source of my power. They tell me the weather, time of day. There's a pile up on Route 66.
Where the fuck did you took my money? That a boy, Teddy. Pain is weakness, leaving the body. <laughs> Hey, this is Necrotic Neck with Thralls of Metal, and you can follow us on YouTube. And now it's time to get back to the Crypt and Macho Frost breakdown of the greatest crossover albums of all time. You want to move into our list of bands we have the same band but different albums for? Yeah, sure. Let's get into it. Let's get into it a little bit. These are bands we chose, same bands, different albums. Now, again, I know we're, we're kind of nitpicking, I guess, to a certain extent, but it gives us an excuse to talk crossover, so let's do so. Uh, right. The first band that we did was Insanity Alert. We both chose an Insanity Alert album. You went with mm -hmm. the 2014 self-titled. I went with 2016's Mollisberger. Honestly, in my opinion, we could have went with 2019's 666-pack. Um, great that band is very uh, consistently great <laughs> and uh, I a lot of the bands out here I just put their first album down because I just went with like I thought of the band first and then whatever the first album that popped into my head from that band I was like okay it's gotta be this one and I'm usually listening I am like a sucker for bands first albums so that's usually the ones I went with but like all three of these bands releases have been absolutely great and they're such a good band. Such a good band. Yeah, they put out a single in August of last year, The Shredditor, just in time of the pandemic. We've actually had the privilege of having Heavy Kevy on the show, man. Uh, very cool yeah. guy. Love the fuck out of that band, man. Yeah. Uh, I hope I get to play with them someday because they're awesome. Fuck yeah. I almost even went with Six Six Pack. The reason I didn't is because it's kind of the newest, I guess. But, yeah. man, like... All Moss No Brain is a fucking phenomenal crossover jam, dude. Oh, absolutely. That song is awesome. Fuck yeah. 
Uh, but I ended up going with – I chose Moshburger because – um, packed with Satan, going to rip your head off, or mm. anthems. You know, I didn't know who David Guetta was until that album came out, and I looked him up, and I was like, oh, yeah, why the fuck is this guy still alive? Why is David Guetta still alive? Why is David Guetta still alive? Why is David Guetta still alive? Yeah, I almost went with Moshburger, too. Um, but, yeah, there's just – there's just when I think of Insanity Alert, I think of that first album of like Glorious Thrash and like stuff like that. Is it's just they're all great. They are great, man. What a great band. What a great band. I, I share your love for them, sir. Our next band is one. I'm so happy that you chose them, man, because I was wondering when I made my list if we were going to have the debate on nuclear assault or not. I have friends of mine that say, fuck you, they're straight up thrash, stop calling them crossover. I couldn't disagree more, in particular, the, the, the Game Over and Survive, which are our two choices. Um, yeah, ga- Game Over is a crossover thrash metal album. <laughs> like, there's no question about that. There, and there's no question about that, sir. There just isn't. No, it's like, it's, yeah, that is, it's ridiculous. It's like, a complete some of their, like, embracing. Later, yeah, of the like, hardcore thing. Like, some of their later stuff, yeah, is more straight up thrash, but, like, those two albums are straight crossover albums. My name is Rufus, and that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love you, Josh, man. Thank you. For <laughs> I've had this argument so many times, man. Dude, they're... It's such an... Imp- especially, again, those two releases. I agree, they did go more thrashier as they, as they went on, but those two releases embrace that hardcore feel in such mm-hmm. a way that it embodies that crossover feel. No, I, I absolutely agree with you. Nuclear Assault. Dan Loker is a god. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, next up, a big a dude, I, again, you have an old man's soul in you somewhere for having some cryptic slaughter on your list, man. Um, I love cryptic slaughter. How can you not? How can you not? Absolutely. I mean, Dude, Cryptic Slaughter is part of my soul, dude. That's fucking, this is the soundtrack to my life shit. Yeah, when I think of crossover, I think of Cryptic Slaughter. Like, they're the quintessential crossover band. Like, they're, the, the speed and, like, aggression in and, and their songs are just unmatched. And, like, they were all, like, high school kids. Dude, man. They're, like, right, they were filthy. You know, they were, <laughs> they were just dirty around the edges. And, you yeah. know, oh. Yeah, they were a bunch of kids. Formed in 1984, funnily enough. Again, that's why you have an old man's soul for knowing them. But, you know, <laughs> I, I've i had many a debate back and forth on – well, and let us let me ask you, I guess, who do you give the Godfather moniker to for the crossover genre, man? I've heard na- lots of names, Cryptic Slaughter, of course, being one of them. But, you know, Suicidal Tendencies, I've heard DRI. We, you know, what, who do you give the Godfather title to? I would give it personally to DRI just because they've been so consistent with it. But I could see the argument for both of those other bands. Like, ST is definitely huge, like, influence and, like, Cryptic Slaughter. But they also all have, like, influenced different styles of crossover. Like, we're the more DRI crossover, but then there's bands like MRSA who are, like, more fast core, like Cryptic Slaughter. And then, like, um, yeah, there's different, but, like, I, I would say, like, if there's, there's, there's a big four, they would all definitely be in there. And then I would probably put, like, Excel in there or something. Oh, yeah, fuck. Uh, uh, Excel, Leeway, maybe we'll talk about. We're going to talk about those bands, matter of fact. So, <laughs> well, uh, you know what? Let's talk about Excel right now, even. Excel was another band that we both. Oh, well, before we move on from Critic Slaughter, you chose Convicted. I chose Money Talks. Interchangeable. They're, I mean, oh, yeah. I, I really only picked Convicted because you picked Money Talks. In yeah, right. Money Talks. <laughs> <laughs> so great, dude. So great. I love Critic Slaughter. All right, but yeah, let's, let's do talk about Excel, man. The joke's on you. The joke's on you. The joke's on you! The joke's on you! Uh, 
you went with the jokes on you 1989. I went with Split Image 1987. Again, interchangeable. Both fucking phenomenal. Mm-hmm. They're both perfect albums. Perfect albums, brother. Out of Venice, uh, California, in that real wheelhouse of the skateboard era of the early 80s, dude. They, oh, absolutely. Uh, phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal. They made a bit of a comeback and attempt in the 90s. Some people may remember the 95 Seeking Refuge was an album I looked forward to when I heard it was going to come out, but it just didn't recapture the glory. But No. but They played a show in Cali not that long ago. Oh, I would love for them to try it again, man. Come on back, baby. We've been you know? trying. Uh, I know some people, like some of the bookers in Chicago, have been trying to get them to come here for a while, and I think that just the price tag is a little steep. Right. Well, Venice Cali boys, man. So, look, I'm dumping yeah. coffee all over. I got so <laughs> excited, I poured coffee all over myself. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man, Excel, and there's another band that you could make an argument for being part of that, you know, Godfather, you know, like you just said, man, you know, you, you mentioned them as a possible fourth on your big four of crossover and hard to argue against it, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and like the reason I pick jokes on you is just because like when I think of Excel, I just think of that face that's on the album cover. Right. Like, that's just the first thing that pops into my brain. Oh, well, our next band that we have a similar choice. Uh, we both have Iron Reagan. And I'm going to just preface this with thank God for Tony Foresta, man. He's doing a good thing for our crossover thing, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> good dude. But uh, Iron Reagan, you went with Worse Than Dead. I went with The Tyranny of Will. Honestly, crossover ministry in 2017 is iconic already, in my opinion. Um, you know, just a force in crossover, wouldn't you say? Yeah, uh, my I have a weird opinion about that band, where like I like every album they do less than the album before that one, and it's Sorry. just like I I, get, I I know like a lot of people still really like that band, and they're still really good, but like I just think that like they will never top their first album for me, like. That Worse Than Dead album, because, like, I remember when they first announced that Iron Reagon was going to be a thing, like, no one really knew about it. And, they, like, they just put that, like, they put out an EP out of nowhere, and it was awesome. And it was just, like, I, it was, like, right when Municipal Waste was, like, in their, like, weird middle area where they put out, like, okay albums, and, like, no one was really super high on them. Right. And then they're, like, oh, no, we're going to do this. And it's, like, Tony Fresca going back to, like, real crossover like good municipal waste era stuff and like it was just awesome and then that first album it's just like it's the like this songs that they're so catchy they're like the whole it's an entire album of earworm songs earworm. and like it they just they're just stuck in your head no matter what and they're just so good and this is one after another after another after another like 10 second songs 19 second songs like a minute and like I always think of that Lich King song, like crossover songs are too damn short, where it's like you, you got half an hour album and there's 19 songs on it. And like, yeah. that's always been like, yes, like that's what modern crossover is. Like short, sweet, to the point. Well, yeah. Here's well, the next one. Modern and its inception. We're, we'll talk a little bit about exactly that concept later in the show. But yeah, I mean, short, punchy, lots of songs on a short album. That was kind of the inception of it all, you know, with, with an mm-hmm. album we'll talk in detail about later. But I, I think the newer Iron Reagan is still a little catchy, man. De- Dead with oh, My yeah, Friends no, is I'm a killer jam. At all. I love I love Dead with My Friends, man. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, there's still good stuff on the new stuff. It's just my I just the production on them are getting weird, and I think they're like they sound a little bit overproduced to me. That's just me being picky and annoying. Well, hey, man, I, I'm accused of that on a daily. So, fuck. <laughs> you know. Uh, well, here, here's another band that we, of course, you know, no list of crossovers complete without Suicidal Tendencies on it, man. Oh, no. You went with the more polished Lights, Camera, Revolution 1990 release, which is hard to argue against, man. That's a phenomenal crossover release. I went with uh, Join the Army. In my yeah. opinion, you know, and again, opinions are what they are, but in my opinion, maybe if there was a B 
big four of albums, not necessarily bands. If there was a big four of albums for me, I would almost put Join the Army for it on it because it's such a blending. Oh, I absolutely love Join the Army. Uh, there's, and you could we could have picked like any of the first like four or five suicidal albums, and it's like yeah, like I get it, right. like. Yeah. They're just all perfect, and like yeah. the only reason I picked Lights, Camera, Revolution was because that was the first one I heard from them when I just randomly found their CD at the library, and then like that, that opening track, dude, like you can't bring me down. Like it's perfect. It's one of the best songs of all time. Anthem, like, anthem. It's yeah, it's oh, yeah, so good. And then the whole album is just like very consistent. Like it's just top to bottom. Like a, in my opinion, a masterpiece of an album. Like perfect. It's yeah, like yeah. top to bottom, great. Right. I, I joined the army. Is a great crossover album, and it's it's role in my life is one that I can't oversell. But mm-hmm. that's not to say it's the, I can't say it's a perfect album. Whereas Lights, Camera, Revolution is a perfect album. So yeah, that would be the only reason because I love Join the Army too. Like that's also a fantastic album. That, like, but yeah, there's just more like in my opinion like a more consistent like writing on well they yeah they found their groove in lights camera that's the album where they yeah. found their you know their groove, absolutely you know well and again uh, a real quick shout back to last week's episode to blake from pig destroyer i'll never i'll grow st man okay anyway <laughs> All right, well, another legendary band on our list, and the last one that we have, the same band, different album, and again, you can make a case for either one of these albums, but DRI, baby. If you lose their life, it's because you lack it. Up with the traffic, or you'll get dragged down beneath the wheel. Beneath the wheel. Beneath the wheel. Definitely on the fucking Mount Rushmore of crossover here. Oh, yeah. You went with Thrash Zone, 1989. I went with Four of a Kind, 1988. I have to give a little background here. The first time I ever heard Four of a Kind, I was tripping my balls off on acid. <laughs> and if you, for, for people out there who are familiar with this album, there's a weird little sound goofy thing they do at the very end of the album that just trashed my brain. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I was convinced they made it specifically for me for that day, you know, for like a year and a half. But It'd be like that sometimes. Yeah, dude, it do you like that brain sometimes? But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, talk to me about your love for DRI, sir. I absolutely worship DRI. I literally almost put. I changed the album I had for them three different times. <laughs> I first I had uh, dealing with it, and awesome. then I had I had crossover because it's the album called Crossover and. We're talking about crossover thrash metal, and then like four of a kind could also be there. Like, but I went with thrash zone just because it's the one that is the one that I, if I'm going to listen to DRI, I'm going to listen to thrash zone. Beneath and the wheel, baby. You know. Beneath the wheel, yeah. That's how I I found them from Tony Hawk. They were or like skate or something. They were in one skateboarding game. Beneath the wheel. And I was like, what is this? And then it was Beneath the Wheel by DRI. Silly. And I was like, all right, let's go. This is awesome. Thrash and then we've, we've had the privilege of being able to play with them. And they're absolutely awesome dudes. And they really dug us. Like, Kurt came on stage while we were playing Pizza Monsters and, like, danced around with us. That's awesome. And then, like, um, they, we were backstage. And, like, they're just, like, super nice guys. And, like, it's just really important for me to, like, be able to like have an idol and be like, no, nah, that dude's actually sick. <laughs> like, yeah, awesome. fuck. oh, dude, legends, man. I mean, flat out legends, dude. The, their role in my life, their role in the soundtrack of my life, their I, it, I can't overstate it. I just can't. It's, no, yeah, they're a huge, huge, huge influence on us, and I don't think we hide that at all. <laughs> yeah, why would you? Fuck. Exactly. I, I'd, put a, I'd put it on a flag and hang it out of my asshole. Fuck them. Yeah, they're one of the bands we always get compared to, and that's always a huge, like, Compl- plus. Yeah. yeah, like, like, uh, look, okay, cool. Well, what do you make of the case that they literally named the genre? I mean, it's an argument. Like, I would... I, I Was that term around before that album came out? 
I, I've debated this much. I, I make the argument that the DRI named the genre with that at release. Uh, that's my Ooh, belief. Um, nobody's been able to sell me different. Now, was the term crossed, thrown about here and there and maybe a band room a time or two? Probably, but it entered our lexicon with that release, I believe, you know. Yeah, I've never really thought about that, honestly. I, I, it's my stance that DRA, I named our fucking genre, baby. I put, I, uh, I'll agree with you. Uh, Do you ever see the, um, the Lich King art for it? Oh, yeah. Where, fuck, yeah. They do uh, Lich King's do-over with yeah. just a crossover art. It's perfect. That paint is awesome. Lich King's awesome. We've had, we've had the luxury of having Mike on the show a couple of times even, man. I love uh, absolutely. Yeah. One of my best friends in the music uh, group, like, in our little scene, like, absolutely adore that guy. Rock solid dude, man. Much love to that dude. Much love to you, Mike. Fuck yeah. They, they're very supportive of the show, too, man. Very cool guys. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, man, DRI, dude. You can't go wrong with some DRI. We're, you know, we, we should bring up Lich King for a minute, even, man. Several Lich King. The Omniclasm, to me, is just ridiculous. Yes. I almost put them on my list. I was, if I would put, if I would have, I would have put World Gone Dead, which is absolutely influential album. Yeah, but like, I don't know, to me, they're not really crossover. They're more just straight up thrashy. Thrash in your ass. Like, they have yeah. some songs that are definitely crossover, but yeah, as an overall mm -hmm. band, I agree they're thrash band. Well, we go deep when we talk metal, and we are coming at that face all night long like a Bukaki video that someone let Gore provide the soundtrack for tonight, baby. So don't go anywhere. We will get back to talking crossover with Macho soon, but we have another guest popping in here, and I am super excited about this, man. Super excited to welcome in Guillermo from Angela Sabatrita. Um, in my opinion, 2012's The Call was just a fucking perfect album. It's kind of the reason we do this show, to be honest with you, man. When that album came out, you couldn't hear it anywhere. It wasn't, it wasn't being played anywhere, and I just can't live in a world where that's true, man, and the new album is killer and crushing. I love it fucking uh, you know enjoy man we're, we're super excited to be jo joined by Guillermo right now man let's talk to him and then we'll come back and and talk a little bit more to Josh about crossover metal and we got Casca Robbery coming by later tonight you know Scully's still coming back later lots more metal don't go nowhere settle in to breaking things and now for something completely different all right, Metalomaniacs, right now I am very, very excited to be joined by my main man, Guillermo, all the way from Spain, joining us today, man, with the brand new release that just came out on February 5th. Fuck yeah, man. How are you, sir? Thank you for joining me. Hey, no, thanks to you. Thanks for your time. I'm pretty good. It's like 10 at night right now, so it's like almost the end of the day, but I'm really, really excited having a beer with you. Huge pleasure. Thanks for your time again. Oh, man, I am a f huge fan for a long, long time, my friend. You know, and I, I know all of our Metalomaniacs already know this, but just a little background. This band formed at this point almost 21 years ago. In fact, your first EP is almost 20 years old. Do you, do you ever think about that and think, holy shit, it's been a long time? Yeah, of course, it's more than half of my life. I, 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 every, 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 every day, I, I think that it's uh, more than 20 years together. But of course, I mean, we, we started playing together very, very young. We were just very small kids. Uh, like, I don't know, 13, 14 years old, we were like, when we met and started jamming all, all together. So yes, our first demo, the very, very first one was uh, released in 2001. And the second demo when I started singing, so it was in 2003. So yeah, man, come on, it's, and it's more than half of my life. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, Let's go for another 20 at least. Yeah, hey, I'll root, I'll be there for all of it. Hopefully, my friend. I, yeah, and, yeah, of course. And I've been a fan since the beginning, and of course, the call for me is honestly one of my favorite records ever, ever, ever. Even it's ah, top <laughs> shelf, sir. So well, yeah, you you guys formed when you were pretty young, and. You have the unique distinction of not only have you been around for a long time, but you're still all the original members, correct? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, in the in the very beginning, it was um, there were a few changes, but we are still the same. I mean, we, we got another singer and we got a, a, another drummer. Bad our drummer Victor was the main, uh, the former bass player, and my brother, who is the bass player now, he was the former guitar player. So we were like three guitar guys and like 
because we were just uh, two, two bands mixed together and playing just uh, covering our, our, our favorite bands. So yeah, when it started to, I mean, to get uh, uh, in the time, like um, setting a beat up, like, okay, starting to do some, the first shows and stuff. Uh, it, it just turned in 2002, by the end of 2002, was exactly this, this lineup, like Victor uh, started learning. He started learning drums in 2002. And I took over the microphone. Uh, I, I was just the guitar player in the beginning. But since we didn't find a, a new singer, because we live in a very small town and there was no a lot of musicians here, but of course there was no single singer. So I decided to. Well, I was not. This, I, I didn't decide actually. I was forced <laughs> to take over to take over the vocals. Right. So it's, it's, okay. Let's let's start with this, and uh, maybe we we will find sometime uh, in the future uh, a new singer. But meanwhile, we're gonna start playing some shows and you can sing. And it was like, okay, let's do it for, for the moment. And it took already happened 20 years. Yeah, yeah. here we are 20 <laughs> years later, man. That's right, dude. That's yeah, right. so <laughs> obviously we're still searching for a single. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, as they say, necessity is the mother of invention, right? And here we are. And I, I, I love the what you've invented for 20 years, sir. I'm a big fan of it, you know? Thank you, man. If I were to ask you to take a just a brief glance over the rear view mirror there, what are some of the highlights that jump out of you at, at you? Wow, I, I know it's a, a lot. Lot. it's a tough question, but yeah, and and actually, what, one thing that we, we love from our career is like there are a lot of highlights. There there are no weak points. Um, I, I I want to to remember our career like like this, you know, like a growing line like this. Sometimes a bit more like this, but always like trying to grow up and always trying to get positive things even from the bad. Uh, situations, but of course, uh, the most important and one of the biggest highlights in our career would be in 2009 when we signed it to Sensory Media Records, because for an underground band and especially from an Spanish metal band, it was a uh, we were the first band in history for doing this in Spain, like uh, signing to a label like this and I start touring worldwide. Like the, we were the first band touring outside of Spain, like normal market, you know, like worldwide uh so yeah i would say that this is the most important highlight actually our, our lives changed because in 2010 we quit our jobs to just focus only on music because it was not possible to share normal jobs with uh with the dedication of of, of of a band like us so yes i would say that but there are a lot of other very very great highlights like the first time we played in japan for example or the the day we, we, we played in the Rockal Park in Colombia, which is the biggest uh, festival in Latin America, it was like, I don't know, maybe 100,000 people there. Wow. It was fucking crazy. Yeah, every band playing there is like, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's like, there's no end from the stage. You see, there's no, it's, it's only people until the horizon, you know. And another very good point was, for example, closing after Ozzy Osbourne, a download festival in Spain. We were uh, headlining the main stage down at the festival here in Spain. It was one of the biggest things ever. So, but I, I, I remember all, when when I look back, like in the rear mirror, it's like, yeah, it's already it's been already twenty years, like only ten years that you're getting like professionally to this. But it's like uh, I prefer to look for the future. Yeah, look to the future, look to the and and just expect what's gonna happen next. Right on. I I love you. I love your approach. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll get you the future in a second. Let's talk about the present for a moment. Exactly. You, you got this brand new release, which is fucking just come out on the 5th. Ridiculously fantastic, man. I love the energy of it. You guys are still firing on all cylinders and then some. But you have to be a little, I mean, has any of your 20-year career prepared you for what this time in the world where you're you know there's there's no live shows there's no release party there's no no of course not i mean no 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 and i think that nobody in the world was prepared for that i mean it's some, something that that we always read on all books or like in science fiction movies i guess but yeah we're living through this right now uh no and this is the best we could do during a pandemic i mean the, the, it, we, we it was not planned to record an album in 2020, I mean, we got a lot of tours happening. We got more than 50 summer festivals. We got three tours. Actually, there was a important 
a chance to go to the United States for the first time in 2020 and everything went to hell. So it was like, what to do? We already got like two or three, two or three songs already composed. So we decided to just keep on composing during the pandemic and this is what happened. So no, no, of course not. We were not prepared for that. Nobody were prepared for that. But at the same time, uh, this is what the best we could do. And in, in some, somehow I'm thankful that this happened because maybe we, we, we wouldn't release an album like this. Like, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know. But I think that I, I, I want to believe that things happen for a reason. And the reason that this happened to us is because we, we needed to make this album. Yeah, well, I, on a personal level, this album is helping me get through these times. So I appreciate it, you know, on, on a me level. Fuck all everybody else for a minute. Just me, me, me. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it is a weird time in the world, though, man. But thank God that we do have the metal, at least. Good Lord. Yeah, of course. It's a more important thing. Of course, fuck everything else. For sure, for sure. Well, what are you doing? To What are you binging? A as you've been locked in and, you know, what, what have you been doing to fill your time other than creating music? Most of the time just creating music because, uh, as I told you before, this is our full-time job. Uh, and we spend all the time we have touring and touring. So since we cannot tour, we cannot go to work. We're already 11 months without, without touring and without working. So, yeah, try to, I don't know, uh, keep mind in order I'm trying to have a good state of mind <laughs> and yeah things are really are getting a bit uh, dangerous nowadays already it's uh it's been too long right now but uh we try to just uh the, the yeah it's, i think the doing this album saved my life i say it saved my mind of course it took like every all things in order of course, there are a lot of other psychological problems with this because yeah, we, we had a huge and very strict lockdown during the first months here. And now we're, we're again in a lockdown. It's like a, there is a night curfew and restaurants and bars are closed. So, yes, nothing to do but going for the walk and just staying at home. So, yeah, trying to... It's uh, it's complicated, man. It's very complicated to, to get, uh, like, not... No, 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 going crazy with yeah. this, but yeah, recording this album and now doing the, all the promotion, it's uh, like some small light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, it's like, yeah, and, and of course, uh, since all the vac vac vaccination plans have started already in Spain, it seems that maybe in one month, two months, things will be much better. Maybe we're going to start touring with social distancing you know, or things like this, but at least we can start touring and uh presenting this this album my life so we're yeah, always trying to focus on the on the hope like in the future in the near future and trying to keep uh sanity yeah as man. much as we can hey you know for some of us keeping our sanity wasn't easy before this pandemic shit so yeah yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> exactly of course so I, I i would be lying if i said that i didn't have problems before but of course i got problems i mean i got my i, I live with my with my beautiful girlfriend and she's a nurse she works in two hospitals and she's working every day uh she's also getting very is getting crazy with this as well wow but uh i'm super Hat, i'm super lucky yeah yeah, yeah, yeah but no, no, she's, she's a true hero, and I'm super happy. Like I, I, I'm living all this this uh, pandemic with her at home. So yeah, and he, he, she helped me a lot to keep sanity and focus on what I have to do. So yeah, of course, I'm, I'm still a lucky guy. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Hey, at the end of the day, we got to survive this fucking world, right? Of course it is. I mean, this is what I choose to do in my life, and that's this is right. what I wanted to do. So that's, yeah. with the highlights and the lower points of the career, but it's, it's this is, I mean, it's a uh, risk just comes with the territory, I guess. <laughs> well, for us metalheads, man, I think it's important for you to know that you are a part of our highlights for this shit, man. I mean that. I, I, I speak, I speak for more than a few of us by saying that, my friend. <laughs> yeah, thanks man, for that. And, and actually, we are, I'm super happy with that. We're super happy because it's the first time that we're doing a, a good promotion in the in north america i mean always uh, every release was like released in north america but this is the first time we're doing a huge promotion like doing a lot of media interviews and reviews and it's like a new world for us 
It's like, come on, it's a huge country. It's the, maybe the, the most important country for heavy metal music nowadays. And it's like, every day we're gaining more and more fans and knowing the new people like you and then other journalists. And it's like, yes, come on. It's like, wow, can't wait for going there. Can't wait for touring in the U.S. Man. Oh, man, I can't wait. From your lips to the metal god's ears, my friend. I cannot wait, sir. Cannot wait. You know, and honestly, I, I, I got to mention that we interviewed Grape Shot, which is from Spain, a band from Spain, who when we asked them to, you know, who were your idols and who, you know, the first name out of their mouth was you guys, brother. So that's oh, you're, really you're 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 paving the way, my friend. <laughs> wow, great. This is a this is a huge such an honor, man. That's yeah, because it's, it's, it's Spain got a lot of incredible bands, new bands. It's like Spain is like a bomb and about to explode with uh, new bands singing in English and doing things that, because the uh, Spanish metal scene is pretty, it's huge, huge. but 80% of the Spanish bands sing in Spanish. So they are huge in Spain and they are huge in Latin America, but they are completely unknown for the rest of the world. So for the last 10 years, I think that there started to be newer bands, like younger bands uh, doing different things and singing in English and, entering the global market and touring the rest of the world so yeah i'm very happy that they say that and it's just like a oh it's a it's such oh. an honor man well and you nailed it too i mean it feels like almost every week now at least there's you know there's a song from a new band out of spain kicking somebody's ass man i'm telling you it's, you guys got a scene happening that's for sure oh thanks man oh, <laughs> i'll be yeah. to say that and you're blazing a trail. Well, and what's the best place for people to pick up a copy of, of the brand new, self-titled, 20 years into this making fucking album, my friend? I don't know. Actually, I don't know if it's a, if it's a available all over uh, North America. I know that there are a couple of places that I, uh, I just uh, read on the internet that it's uh, in some stores, but even our manager didn't know that the, the album was physically available in, in North America. But actually, it is, so... I don't know, go to your uh, local record store. Maybe you can find us. We'll, but share of course, some, we'll share some links here because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's on Amazon and everything now. So, Wow, it would be, yeah. it would be like a surprise. I, I was talking about this to, to our manager today. Like, dude, I saw a couple of pictures from, from North America, like the physical copy, and he said, uh, I didn't have any notice about, any new about this. So it would be like, it's a very, very good news, of course. Yeah, 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 and if not, we, we of course we got um, online platforms. We got iTunes, we got Spotify, and all that stuff. But yeah, of course, if, if you can get and grab a physical copy, I mean, I, I, I took care of the of the artwork. I mean, I took care of the of the design inside. So it's 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 designed with a lot of. It, it's a really really very good piece of art, I think, and especially the the vinyl, the LP. It's like amazing to us. So yeah, if you can go, just you, if you can buy it, just please go. If not, follow us on internet, Instagram, Steph, and Spotify, iTunes, YouTube. You guys are on YouTube. Well, and you know, yes, of course, we're a broken record here with physical copies. I push that all the time. Pick up a physical copy, ladies and gentlemen. It's you, the artwork. You you can be a pop fan or a rap fan, and you can get all your music on the internet. As a metal fan. Our art is, is integral to our thing. You know what I mean? The artwork, and you want to hold it in your hand. Get the fucking physical copy. Yeah, 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 of course. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a vinyl lover uh, and vinyl collector, and, and I got all, all the music I love, I got in vinyl because I want to, to watch the covers. Like when I was a kid, like every detail on the cover and the stuff. So, yeah, of course. Yeah. And, uh, as, as you say, there's a pop and rap and other kind of music for, yeah, listening to internet or... Just downloading MP3, but no, heavy but metal is for yeah, for yeah, touching. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're we're a full on assault of the senses, man, in every way. You know that you need to absorb it all. We gotta, you know, heavy metal fans want to have their cake and eat it too, and then rub it all over somody's ass. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the way to go, my friend. Well, you fucking rock, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. We're going to fucking play a jam for everybody right now off the new album, man. But I appreciate the fuck out of you hanging out with us here at Metal of Mania, my friend. Your time is valuable and very, very appreciated, sir. Wow, dude. It's like I'm super thankful that I'm here with you. Uh, I just, it's, yeah, very, very pleased to meet you and to be here with you with this 
Uh, it's a huge pleasure and uh, such an honor, really. Uh, and trust me, it's true what I'm saying. This uh, the first time I'm doing this uh, for the North America, and it, I'm really, really excited about that. And I can't wait for this to pass, this fucking pandemic to pass, and cross the ocean and go to North America and touring for the first time because it's the it's the only territory on planet Earth that we never been. North America. We played everywhere else. We played everywhere, even in Africa. We played in China, but we never been in the United States. We never been in Canada. So yeah, it's about time. Yeah. Oh, long overdue, even long overdue, my friend. Well, I tell you what. When you get out here, I'll be in the front row, right there, singing along, sir. Yes. <laughs> I can't wait for that to happen. Me either, my me either, sir. Ah, I need it. All right, Desmond. Yeah, well, fuck yeah, man! I, I love you, man. I love the fuck out of you, brother. I appreciate your 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 art and what you do. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time, man. Hey, what's up? This is Guillermo from Mandalus. I'm here with the Crypt of Metal Mania.
meat sandwich, we are under attack. Hey, this is Joe from Tombstone Blue. Check us out wherever you stream music. If you dig what we do, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and all that other good shit. But right now, it's time to get back to the crypt and Macho Frost breakdown of the greatest crossover albums of all time. Because like I almost put uh like those they're like uh, America Must Be Destroyed by Guar on my album on my list because like so you can argue that it's a crossover album. It's got the elements. It's got all of them, but right. like it's not consistently a crossover album. So there's right. some deviance. So I was like, I'm not gonna. Well, gonna go through, like, yeah, they got so many albums that are not. So you know. Oh know. yeah, absolutely. They <laughs> they are all over the place. Yeah. But <laughs> then I uh, I also realized this is going completely off track. Give but to um, I totally forgot to put a band on my list that I wish I put on my list. Uh, I would have put. I forgot Gamma Bomb. Oh my god, dude! Yeah, I, yeah. Oh, what a horrible! Tales audition. from the Grave from Space is such a great album, and I completely forgot about it. And we've had Joe on the show. Joe has come <laughs> on the show, man. Joe's a friend of ours on the show. Good guy. Yeah, yeah, dude, sure. they they got a brand new release out even right now. Uh, uh Sea Savage and the dude mm -hmm. is fucking. It's, it's really good. It's it's so it's on my top ten of this year so far. Dude, it's riffy. It's fun. It's great. Yeah, oh, yeah. fuck yeah. yeah, great band, great band. Much love, Joe. I love you guys, man. <laughs> All right, well now let's help with the home stretch of our list here, man. We got a couple of we we chose same band, same album. And that's pretty much because you just can't argue with these being Hallmark crossover. You know, if these are the albums, if you or I were to approach somebody and they said, I've never heard crossover metal before, what should I first digest? These are those albums. Would you agree? Yes. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Starting with No Mercy, man. <laughs> We mentioned earlier that Uncle Slam was very incestuous with suicidal mm. tendencies. Well, sh No Mercy follows certainly fits that as well. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's basically just suicidal part two. Right. I mean, uh, one of the suicidal albums at one point was supposed to be a No Mercy release and everything. So, yeah. Uh, Mike Clark is from both. And... Yeah, it's basically like the SOD MOD thing. Right. So, totally right on. Yeah, which we'll get to. That's we're gonna close our segment on that whole thing there. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's cool, man. No Mercy was a great band too, and we both chose Widespread Bloodshed. Love Runs Red, nineteen eighty seven release. Uh, basically, started as like you said, a side project for the Suicidal Tendencies guys. Um, the second album was supposed to be released, which turned into the third Suicidal Tendencies album. How will I laugh tomorrow? Which is an iconic album for me. You know, great album. Literally, sound staple to my life type of shit. So. Uh, um, they officially, and I, I know that it was talked about for years and years, would there be a new No Mercy release? They even did some things live with Suicidal Tendencies a few times. But in that. 2013, and, and last I checked, that has not been changed, that it's a dead project, correct? Yeah, I don't think they're doing anything with it. Yeah, yeah, it's been officially put on... It's been officially lanced, but that, yeah, man, it was a fun thing, though. And that album is iconic, in my opinion. I mean, it's oh, yeah, great. all Mark crossover. Waking the Dead. Uh, oh. Such a great song. Fuck yeah, man. Anthem, again, it's a, that's the shit that I, I get images of me and a bunch of dudes, like, yelling in unison together in a room and fucking, you know, that's oh, that's metal shit, brother. That's mm -hmm. crossover, even. Crossover. Oh, well. Yeah. Gang vocals and thrash and crossover, man. We're not afraid of that shit. Oh, no. <laughs> we had an entire song on our full length that's just gang vocals. 
<laughs> well, hey, I like it, man. That's Unison, brother. And Union We Stand, <laughs> I know, is a thrash song from Overkill. It's not at all a crossover song. But, dude, something about that, you know, everybody singing in unison like that at a live event, man. It's a very fucking, you know. Oh, absolutely. Transformative. All right, the next band on our list, man, The Accused. <laughs> What a great I'm, mm. I'm so again you have an old man soul when I saw this on your list I was like this motherfucker you know this is my brother right here <laughs> uh the Ma Martha's Flatterheads Maddest Stories Ever Told 1988 iconic man Seattle Washington oh. band oh yeah absolutely like such an influential album like it's so good I just like it's just one of those bands that like totally yeah, got just, it yeah, you just you think about crossover, you think of the accused, and like, yeah, absolutely, like influential band. You can't help it, man. And think about this: they were formed in 1981. Um, they've done five demos. They've had four splits out with bands like Morpheus and Municipal Waste, by the way. Uh, four yeah. EPs. They got seven full-length albums. I mean, they're uh, killer stuff. There's some discography stuff to get into if you're just learning about the accused right now. Yeah, there's a lot to dive into. Most of it's pretty decent. Like, it's yeah. pretty consistent, yeah. Dude, yeah. I, and, again, Seattle, Washington, they kind of put Seattle, Washington on the map with the whole fucking uh, crossover scene at that time, and mm -hmm. just great stuff, man. They're listed as still active, by the way. Yeah, I was just going to ask, like, I don't know if they're doing anything. <laughs> I, yeah, their last release was uh, The Underrated Curse of Martha Splatter in 2009. I think that's a great album myself. I really honestly I don't think do. I've listened to it. Oh, it, it was a 2009 release, but dude, I I thought it was a great release. I was like, man, fuck yeah! yeah. And I thought we'd get more from them, but nothing since. Yeah, I, I would love to see them live. I think that'd be incredible. Oh, the accused man. Oh, I got to see them live way way back in the day, man. Early early days. Very now. jealous. Um, next band up, we've kind of talked to them a little bit, man. And we'll, again, this is one of the first bands that comes to my mind when I think crossovers. Municipal Waste, Hazardous Mutation, 2005. <laughs> East Coast crossover, heavy riff, man, heavy riff stuff. Uh, yeah, that is absolutely the most influential album to me, like musically. Like, I know it's super like cliche for the crossover dude to like fucking municipal waste, but like, hey, it was. It was the perfect time, like, right when Art of Partying came out, I was in high school, and, like, that's, we were that, like, that album, like, totally encapsulated my friend group, and it was just, like, okay, like, we have an entire album about, like, songs we could party to, and, like, it was just perfect, and, like, I didn't pick that album, I picked Hazardous Mutation, because, like, I will argue to the day I die that Hazardous Mutation is a better album than Art of Partying. And like a lot of, like they're both perfect albums. They're but perfect. Like, I'm like, I'm not going to like, yeah, like Art of Partying is great. But we like both Hazardous, chose Hazardous Mutation, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Like Hazardous is just like every single song is so good. And like it, it's, the riffs are so catchy. It's got like Mind Eraser and like the thing and like, dude, just like every, it's just perfect song after good 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 song and it's just it's when it ends you just want to play it again <laughs> Over again, right? I, that's why i chose it as well man it's literally it's uh, the riffs are just delicious you know? uh, yeah i remember listening to it for the first time and like my brain like melted i was yeah. like jesus christ like this is what i want to do like i want to start a band that is like this <laughs> that does the, this yeah like i want to do this yeah, it's hard to argue, brother. It is one of those albums where you're listening to it and you're like, "This is why we're. This is it." When someone asks me why I'm a metalhead and why, th th here's my answer right here. This is my answer. Because this album exists is why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know. What great yeah, my answer to that question is always because there's guar. <laughs> uh, yeah, hard to argue with that also. Sir. Yeah, I 
you know. <laughs> I've got to see Gore live a bunch of times, man. And I will forever argue until I die that you're an, a you're a changed human being once you've seen Gore live. Absolutely. I've <laughs> I've I think I'm on my twenty first Gore show now. Oh, that's all. Yeah, I think I only got like, like six or seven, so I was able to see Brocky like oh, nine yeah. times before he died. And like they're still great live, uh, but they've definitely they've definitely lost that little bit, that little something, that little magic. Well Brocky was just flat out nuts, man. So they lost the, that guy was an absolute genius. A genius. Yeah. The the psycho nut job genius, baby. And he he we lost the we lost a good one there, my friend. Absolutely. What a like, loss to the world. Uh, Ugh. The absolute biggest musical influence on me of all time is Dave Brocky. Hello out there, TV land or wherever the fuck you're watching this. This is Dave Brocky. I am Odorous's, Odorous Rungus of Guar's personal butt boy. Ugh, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Let's move to the next on our list, my friend, which is some crumb suckers. <laughs> Again, what a great call for, for a younger dude to know. But Life of Dreams 1986 is, again, New York hardcore elements. Mm -hmm. um, just the perfect, perfect, perfect fucking album. Perfect. Oh, it's yeah, absolutely perfect. It's got the perfect amount of punk and the perfect amount of thrash. It's like, it's the, it's the fusion. Like, they found it. They found the little mark and they hit it. And right, in the, right out of the park, my friend. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so good, dude. Um, they only put out that one, and then in 1988, they put out Beast on My Back and Bomb, which would what it became known for. But then, you know, of course, Gary Meskel and Dan Richardson would later form Propane, which is another band I do dig and I'm a fan of. But, mm -hmm. dude, Chrome Suckers was a magical thing. It was a magical time in my life for a magical release and a magical uh, – it was uh, – uh, Yeah, great band. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. And again, just right out of Long Island, New York, they really just captured that New York essence when they, you know. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Good shit, man. Listen to them and, and eat some super thin pizza, goddammit, with grease all over. <laughs> um, next up, dude, and again, this is a band I've argued with a few times with people, and I and, and that's Agnostic Front. <laughs> Man, some people say, oh, they're just hardcore. Some people say they're just punk. Some people say they don't deserve to be on a crossover list. I could not disagree more. I'm so happy that you included this in your list as well. 1986 Calls for Alarm is quintessential crossover, period, end of sentence. Yeah, Calls for Alarm is is a crossover album. <laughs> like, there's not even, again, there's no question about How it. How is there debate on this? <laughs> like, all you have to do is listen to it. Uh, right? I mean... <laughs> I'll give you that some of the albums were not as crossover as this one was, but man, Call for Alarm is just right on the wheelhouse of crossover, brother. It's oh, got yeah. all of it. It's got everything. Like they definitely have their hardcore albums and they definitely have their punk albums, but like th that's the best of both worlds right there. Oh, dude, it, and I dude, I was a 15-year-old kid. This album changed my life. There's I can I'm not overstating it when I say that. This album changed my life. It changed everything about my whole approach to music. I was like, dude, anything named Def Leppard and Motley Crue can suck my dick from now on for the rest <laughs> of my life. You know what I mean? Like, dude, this is where I want to live at right now, an agnostic front world. Yeah. They, <laughs> um, they're, they're a huge influence on us, absolutely. And they're such a great, amazing band live, like, even to this day. Like, they blow it out of the park. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. never seen a, like, more energetic, like, show. Like, we saw them at, I was, yeah, I saw them at Reggie's, like, I think two or three years ago and like i was absolutely floored by how good it was like i knew it was going to be good but i didn't think it was going to be that good and it was ridiculous like that was so good for ring it. they yeah, live I for it. and honestly that's a band to appreciate their albums is one thing but to really appreciate them you got to see them live because oh yeah i recommend it highly like yeah. if you can see agnostic front like go the yeah. go see agnostic even now front. yeah i mean to do it in the 80s which i thank the lord i was able to see, do but yeah, if you dope. can see them now, you still have to. I mean, it's oh yeah, I, I, this is one of the bands I will never miss live ever again. Yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. They bring it every single time out. And to me, there, I have a weird correlation. There, and follow me on this, man. 
I have a weird correlation between Agnostic Front and Possessed. Possessed being the thrash metal band, but mm-hmm. and that is that Calls for Alarm is a from a band that's known more for hardcore maybe and more for punk. Calls for Alarm is a perfect crossover album, Andy. and Possessed is a band more known for blacker elements maybe and and definitely thrash metal. But to me, Seven Churches is, is the perfect death metal album. Oh yeah, you know they're not necessarily a death metal band if you look at their entire being. But that album is the perfect, if not, maybe, you know, Chuck Schuldinger is on record as saying it's the first ever death metal album, yeah, 1985, Seven mm-hmm. Churches. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that, Afa? No, I agree. Like, it's it's a great album, and it's definitely death metal. Like, it's it's the early, like, like little, like, you can see it. Like, it's there. <laughs> it's there, man. Yeah, the blueprint of what would be death metal is definitely... Yeah, and if, like, if Chuck says so, like, you listen. Let's, That's like, you right. don't... <laughs> <laughs> That's right, brother. Oh, I worship Chuck until I die, brother. Absolutely. I'll, I'll see you in the afterlife somewhere, my metal friend. But yeah, man, uh, back, just to close out the agnostic front thing, though, man, so badass, so great, so... Mm-hmm. So phenomenal. Next up, and we only have a couple left here, and I and I appreciate you doing this, by the way, Josh. You kick ass, man. I'm enjoying no our problem, chat man. on crossover, brother. Been fun. Well, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. We give good guests around here, man, and we ain't done. We still have more with Josh. I'm looking forward to talking with Casca Robbery here soon. As the metal train rolls on tonight for episode 203 of Metalomania. Tell a friend, damn it. Tell a friend, damn it. All right, let's keep the monsters happy, though, and provide the slam here for a little bit. Time for some flaming wreckage out of Australia. We played a bunch from their 2017 release, From Flesh to Dust, and they are back with this killer new outing, Cathedral of Bones. We are going to play the voiceless from it right now and follow that up with the crown from my boy Waylon out there from Truth the Boy. That's right, this is for you, my boy Waylon. Shout out. I'm going to get that dude back on the show soon, too. But uh, check out the crown. Check out Truth the Void. As a matter of fact, Wayland's band, uh, Live Metal, and get you some merch, man. World Destroyer is the new crown outing. We drift on. It's this new banger. Enjoy and come on back, and we'll close things out with our boy Mach, Macho about the crossover thing, and, and we'll do more stuff because we got more stuff to do here on Metalomania. Okay, okay. Uh, there's a little voice in my head that is saying this is not a good idea. Tell it to shut up and watch.
it only lasts for a few seconds. I just peed a little. Oh, that's badass. Oh, this is good. We're connecting. We're, we're sharing our feelings.
There are chips on the coffee table and a bucket on the floor. Try not to make a mess. Yo, this is your boy Ronnie B, reporter on location for Devastation, and I'm super pumped to get back to the crypt and my man Josh Macho Frost from the badass band Texas Toast Chainsaw Massacre. They're breaking down the greatest crossover thrash metal albums of all time, and I tell you what, I'm gonna throw MOD's gross misconduct in the ring. Let's get back at this shit. Next up, man, and this actually is a band I just saw some news right before our conversation today. Leeway, man, born to expire in 1989. <laughs> Leeway will always be in the conversation for me for the godfathers of our crossover thing, you know. Yeah, um, Born to Expire is such a quintessential album. It's so good. It it's, is. I like. Good. It's just top to bottom perfect, and like, it just has like a vibe to it where like it just feel it makes you feel good. Like, there's something about Eddie's voice and the way he sings. It's just like yes, like this is awesome, and like the the guitar tone and like all those riffs are unnecessary. Like, it's just it. it that album is so good, and it's like I been incredibly lucky to be able to talk to Eddie quite a few times and like hearing that guy talk and like the first time I had a conversation with him he called me because we were talking about booking for Toastmania because like I was just like dude I'm gonna try to get leeway like whatever and then it happened yeah, and then like I messaged him on Facebook and he's like hey man call me and I was like okay and I'm like I'm, I don't want to like I'm just gonna talk to Eddie leeway like sure like whatever and I remember like <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember, like, getting his phone number and, like, calling him and just being, like, the whole time being, like, is this real? Like, is this an actual thing I'm doing? Like, talking to one of the most influential vocalists, like, in my entire life. Ever. And then, like, I was just so dumbfounded by it. And then, like, when they showed up to uh, the show, it was uh, Toastmania 9, the last one, at Subterranean. And um, just, like, we just, he's such a nice dude. Like, yeah, he's definitely had his demons and stuff, but, like, he's such a super cool dude. Like, he's it's incredibly down to earth, and just, like, he'll just sit and listen to you talk about anything. And, like, he was so helpful, like, when he was, like, when he first, when he first told me the idea for Toastmania, he's like, yeah, man, that's, like, super cool. Like, I really, like, appreciate you guys, like, trying to keep, like, this, cra like, thrive stream alive, like, with the, you, all you young kids. And then he's like, why don't you buy a hot dog stand and sell a bunch of hot dogs out of the back of the venue? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> like, okay. Like, it's definitely fun listening to him talk because you never know what he's going to say next. And, mm -hmm. like, awesome. but Born to Expire, absolutely a god groundbreaking perfect at like i know i've said a lot of albums on this list are perfect and most That's of them they like, are yeah like, there's just these all of these albums are great but like if i had to pick one to listen to i would listen to born to expire right here right now well and unfortunately i don't i don't know if you heard but the uh, the news just broke today i guess that eddie has uh third uh stage three lung cancer Oh no, that's horrible. That is horrible, horrible news. So I'm going to make sure while we're showing this, we share there's a GoFundMe, there's going to be bills. He does not have health insurance. So we will share that if anybody can help out. Because, dude, like you said, Eddie has given our life so much. I mean, dude, no. think about that. You can't calculate what, what this Born to Expire is a perfect, perfect fucking album, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it goes through my mind. I can almost, that's one of those albums where I can almost. In my head, without it playing, I could play it note for note, word for word, from start to finish. Oh yeah, head, you know without I mean? it, without yeah, without a doubt. Like, and I bet if you timed me, I'd be pretty night right on, right there. You know, <laughs> too, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, man. he still he still sounds absolutely incredible live. Fuck yeah, dude, leeway, man. Influential crossover goodness at its core, man. Fucking. You know, again, captured that New York City style, dude. I, you mm -hmm. know, this is one of those bands I would play to my funeral. Is how much I love oh, it, dude. Yeah, play, make me an offer, like while I'm being lowered into the ground. Please, please. <laughs> look, we're on tape here. We both have made a request. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we share a love for crossover, and now we'll share a love for songs played at our funeral, sir. All right, right on. <laughs> 
and, and and let's help prolong, man. Let's fucking let's keep Eddie around, dude. So anybody can help out. If you could, guys can help out with the GoFundMe, please do, man. We'll share that information. Yeah, I'll definitely post it on the toast page and stuff when I'm done with this. We'll run it across here while we're talking about it on the show too. So, all right. Well, that brings us to a uh, kind of a conflagration here of the last two bands. I'm going to talk. We'll talk about them together because. They both very much center around my main man, Billy Milano, who mm-hmm. a centerpiece, a highlight of ever doing this show, to be honest, is we, we love talking to Billy so much when we had him on the show. We made it a two-part event. We we talked to Billy for like two fucking hours. Uh, I would just let him talk. I would ask him a question and just let him talk and get out of the way, you know? Yeah, I would, yeah. What an awesome interview, dude. He, I, I Again, Metalheads out there, if you missed that, it's on our YouTube channel. It's on our main page. You can go to the archives. We had a two-part interview with Billy Milano. Just phenomenal. Just bare-knuckle honest dude right there, my friend. Absolutely. So, well, let's let's start by talking about the MOD Cross Misconduct. I, I'm sorry, Gross Misconduct 1989's release. And then we'll talk about the 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 for, in my opinion one of the most perfect albums of all time. So, but gross yeah. misconduct, perfect crossover. You know, we were all wondering what was going to happen with Billy Milano when the SOD thing broke up and those guys left to be you know what would become Nuclear Assault and Anthrax. Um, and then gross misconduct hit us all in the face, and we were like, "Well, shit, Billy's still here." Oh yeah, well he came <laughs> out with like USA for MOD first. And then, like, that album I almost put on. But, like, you can't beat gross misconduct. <laughs> like, yeah, you no, can't. I... It's, it's the – everything about it is just so good. It's got, like, the fe- the, the cover of uh, Living in the City by Fear is, like, that's the version I hear in my head. Like, I don't even hear the Fear version anymore. I hear Billy Milano. Fuck, yeah. And, like, it's got, like, that weird theme song that they do. And, like um, – yeah, like True Colors, oh. and like No Glove, No Love. No like, Glove, No Love, come baby. On, yeah, that's, like, that's wheelhouse crossover shit. Oh, absolutely. Well, and very much, obviously because of the Billy Milano factor, but it has real heavily, you know, it feels like the continuation of SOD in a lot of ways, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And like Billy Milano is definitely the person I've like modeled my vocals of off of the most like i just wanted to be like billy milano like i'm just a big chubby dude too like i just want to be up there be billy and like that's where i like take all my like toast influence from is it's tony foresta and billy milano like that's 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 it i I still want to be billy milano fuck i'm 50 i still want to be billy milano you know yeah that's good shit man and and he was one of those guys, man, like it or not, people want to say, you know, I, I've heard people shit on him and say, you know, he's he's one of those guys that was the first to do it. And you will know that because he'll be the first to tell you that he was the first to do it. But, hey, yeah. you earned that, man. He earned that mm-hmm. shit, right? I mean. Yeah. Like, he's definitely said some stuff that I don't agree with. But, like, no denying his influence on the crossover genre and, like, being the dude to, like, master it and – show everyone else how to do it yeah dude i mean his place and time can't be argued with i mean no and i won't take that away from him the impact yeah i mean i don't agree with every word that comes out of his mouth himself but (laughs) on the interview even a couple of times i was like you know (laughs) that's definitely billy milan (laughs) but hey but you let him go you get out of billy's way when billy's talking about that (laughs) But uh, it will, and that brings us to our last album and Billy related man. Speaking of Mr. Died, now I know that you probably couldn't put this album out today with that title, you know. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> very no longer PC kind of thing, and. There's been millions of remakes where it's like speak Spanish or die and speak, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. or die, speak French or die. I've heard all that shit. But August 30th, 1985, I was a month past my 14th birthday. And my entire life changed with 
the buying of this. I, I had no idea what I was buying. I used to go to record stores and look through the metal section and buy shit completely off of the art cover. Mm -hmm. And I saw this, like, what the fuck is this thing, you know? And I bought it specifically from the art cover. No idea what I was buying. And the, I, here we are. That was 1985, man. Here we are fucking 35, 30, 40 years later, and it's still... I play it all the time, dude. I play it all the time. Oh, yeah. No, it's a... Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I I wish there was a counter of how many times I've listened to this album, because it would probably be disgusting. Yeah, dude. Uh, 30 songs. Some releases have 30 songs on it at, at a running time of about 28 minutes. <laughs> but, dude, it's... Ah! This is what Crossover tries to be, my friend. I mean... I would argue the strongest intro to first song of any album ever. Yeah, man. Like March of the SOD into um, Sergeant, Sergeant D, D is, the SOD. is is unmatched. Like to Dude. this day, like there will never be a better like thrash like intro to song. Sergeant D is coming, and you're on his list. Like perfect, and it's still like every time you see Anthrax now, like they'll play that song, and like it never. Well, every time I've seen them do it, it's the biggest pop of the whole night like that's when they get their biggest reactions is like when they play the SOD song it's a thunderfuck song baby and like yeah I remember being like in high school and like seeing that album come up all the time and be like I don't know what this is and then I listened to it and I was like oh my god like okay like I, this is this yeah it changed it changed you like it changes you yeah, yeah. I'm like it's just from start like start to finish like every song has its place oh, and like it's got like some of the goofiest stuff where it's like when they played like that white noise while like Billy's Ricard is like what's that fucking noise man what the fuck is that fucking noise what the fuck is that like I quote that all the time like that's Dude. part of my daily life is talking like <laughs> and like it's got like milk and Freddy Krueger and like kill yourself yeah. and fucking yourself dude and I home. quote this album and there's there's scarcely a day that goes by where I don't quote. If we if I open the refrigerator and there's no milk, I want some milk. You know, my coffee grows. Yeah, you know, my coffee grows cold. I dude, I say that shit all the time. You know, pre menstrual princess blues is goddamn magic song. I mean, yeah, because it it has that like tongue like all these albums have like that tongue in cheek like just making fun of it. But like S O D and M O D both did it better than anyone else. Better and 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 a lot of time in a lot of ways first. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, milk and fucking kill, you. kill yourself, kill yourself. Why don't you kill yourself? You know, don't rely on no one else in it all. Kill yourself. Dude, that's mm -hmm. fucking like, ridiculous. It's so good. And like, that was always one, like, um, the, the thing that, like, I like about Stormtroopers of Death more than, like, other crossover bands is their use of, for, like, the prevalence of the bass in their albums. Like, the bass is always put in front of the guitar. And, it's always made them like have their own sound because like you just hear that like boom, 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 like you hear the bass and there's so many bass breaks and stuff and that's literally what we based like the first three EPs off of like if you listen to our first EPs like there is a direct Stormtroopers of Death like obviously it's gonna be there but like we did it man like we put bass like bass was most important to anything else because we wanted that SOD bass tone. Dude, oh, and it gets in your soul. That infects you. Oh, absolutely. What an awesome, awesome fucking album. Awesome fucking list. And, and that does close out our, our look back on some of our best crossover, man. I know we left some stuff off, and we could probably go on and make another list of 20 more songs if we wanted to. Yeah, right? probably. <laughs> but, you know, w what's next for you guys, though, man? I, I know that you have the name, so I, I, we, we have you on record. I have you on on a recording here saying that I'm going to later in the year be hitting you up for, for new Texas Toast stuff, right? Yeah, it should be coming out this year. Like, um, yeah, Super Turbo. Uh, it's We have the art and stuff on our Facebook. We have, like, a whole, like, track listing out. Like, all the songs are written. We are literally recording them. Like, awesome. it's, it's being done. Can't wait, it's just man. we've had some hiccups with, like, COVID. Like, we literally had studio time booked and then covid happened and then we couldn't go and then like 
it's just been a mess. Like anything that could have gone wrong, like making this album has gone wrong. And it's just keep pushing it back and pushing it back and pushing it back. But I think we're done. I think this is when we finally get it done. And yeah, so we have that um, super turbo. Uh, we have a bunch of new merch coming out really soon. Uh, we got some long sleeves. We got some masks. We got some hats. So check out our Facebook page for those. Should be going up in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. And then we got Toastamania X still in limbo. Um, I don't think it's going to happen this year. Like, if anything, it would be, like, very late this year. But it's always been a summer thing. So I'd rather just probably just push it to next year to be safe just because safety is – very important to us like we don't want anyone to get sick or anything so hopefully we could do it well we will do it next year like i'm sure there's not it's probably not gonna last for another year that would be miserable absolutely miserable but uh hopefully we could keep the same lineup i know it's definitely gonna change because a lot of it was tours that were coming through so it might look different but i'm gonna try to keep as many of them as i can i know none slaughters they basically said, like, whenever, like, fine. So, like, we'll have none slaughter. Uh, Ghoul, I know, is, um, like, kind of, I, they don't know what they're doing because, like, Exhumed has the tour. And then, like, it's just a mess. So I'm oh, trying my nice. best to, like, bring the, like, hold the reins and try to, like, keep my grip on it. And it's just, we'll see what happens. But it's still going to happen when we can do it. It's going to happen. In one form, one shape, one or another, it'll happen. Yeah, but that's really it for us. Uh, Infowars isn't really doing anything. We're kind of on hiatus right now. But, um, yeah, Toast, look for new music soon. We yes, are hopefully finishing it. Very well, soon. I will be ordering me a hard copy of the new release. I'll be ordering me some merch, brother. Count me in, my friend. Right on, man. appreciate it. Straight up in the front row, fucking fan of what you do, my my brother, and I appreciate you joining me for this as well. Yeah, no problem, man. It's been a great time. You kick ass, man. You kick ass, and 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 if, uh, I'll, I'll drag you back on at some point in the future. We'll talk about some other ridiculous bullshit, right? Okay, yeah, anytime, man. Fuck yeah, Josh, you rock, brother, man. And uh, when new music comes available, metalheads, join us because when Texas Toast has it out, we will bring it to you, my friends. Because I can't wait. I'm a big fan of the band and a big fan of this dude. So. Thanks for everything, Josh. I appreciate the fuck out of it. Yeah, no problem, man. Thank you. Crossover bone tickled? Check. Holy smokes, Metalomaniacs. This is Jonathan Hassler with Into Existence, and that was The Crypt and Macho Frost's breakdown of the greatest crossover thrash metal album of all time. So, all right, all you crossover fans out there, what do we leave out, man? Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. What do we leave out? What do we give too much love to? I want to know your opinions. Um, what do we remind you of that maybe you've forgotten about by, by checking out our list tonight, man? Because we went deep. We went into the 80s for a bunch of them motherfuckers tonight, man. Macho had some deep cuts. He has the mind of an old school metalhead. I think that's why he, he's kin to me. That dude's a, he, immediately my brother. Thank you, Macho, man. I appreciate the fuck out of that. Macho, Macho, man. Thank you, brother, for hanging out. <laughs> And doing that thing. But we'll let you know when uh, Super Turbo hits the world. We won't let you forget it. But please do follow that band on YouTube. Follow them on social media, Facebook, all that shit, man. Texas Toast, Chainsaw Massacre, Badassery in my book and in yours. So uh, that brings us, it's time for the Melomania Sandwich, man. Um, and for if you're new to the show, that's two pieces of brand new bread with some crusty old meat shoved in the middle. But don't worry, it sounds it sounds. Uh, taste, it's, it's tastier than it sounds, I promise. Um, we're going to top this bread with some Overtone, as a matter of fact, man. Overtone are our friends out of Chile, man. We've had them on the show. If you can dig into our archives, you can check out an interview with them. Super awesome guys. Excited that they're back with a brand new jam. They got a brand new single called Made Manifest. And uh, it's just fucking badass. We so enjoy that. And we're going to go old school after that, man. We're going to stay on point for the show tonight with some nuclear assault. We're going to play Nuclear War from 1986's Game Over, which Macho and I discussed here just a little bit ago. Um, badass jam, old school shit. You know, hope you dig it. And then we're going to put in the back end piece of bread, our sandwich closer, as we call it. It's going to be the new Gojira song, man. Born for One Thing is brilliant, and I personally think most – of the songs from this band are. I'm a huge Gojira fan. I think they're fantastic. Magma was it just a great deal of fantastic to me. I dug the fuck out of it. I can't wait for April 30th when Fortitude, this album, 
formerly hits into your world. So check it out. Check it out. Check it out. And you know what? We're going to come back out of all of that badassery, and we're going to be joined by two of my favorite new people in the world. That's right. Megan and Corey from Casket Robbery are here. They're here to hang out with us, to hang out with you, to be a part of your life. And we're going to hang out for a little bit. We're going to play the hard stuff. We're going to shoot the shit. I love these two, and if you don't already, you are about to. Enjoy this smash session, and when we come back, let's talk to Casket Robbery for a little while, everybody. So all of y'all, quick, come over here with me. Hey, this is Overton, and you're listening to Metal Mania. My friends is like a beer expert you know he's like we gotta go to a brewery i'm like why can't we just go to a bar he's like it's fine you can see how it's made i don't care how it's made 
Look, I like porn. I don't need to go to a broken home. <laughs> Not saying all porn stars are in broken homes, just the ones I like. <laughs> Seems like a lot of people are quitting the booze now. It's kind of going away. All my friends are getting sober. And look, that's good, but some people are better when they're drinking. There's a lot of bad sobers out there, you know? We always talk about the negative part about booze. What about the good? Like, sure, you drove through a playground, but you could dance, man. <laughs> Come on. Trying to get better. I'm in therapy. Anybody else? Hey, there you go. A couple people. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing this thing called exposure therapy. That's where you face your fears. Scared of heights? Take a hot air balloon. Scared of drowning? Takes you in the ocean. So he said, what are you scared of, Mark? I said, oh, I'm claustrophobic and scared of intimacy. So he took me in a little closet and fucked me. <laughs> Was very expensive. Uh, yeah. Why the stigma with therapy? Why? All my friends make fun of me. I think it should be mandatory. Everybody works out their muscles. Why not work out your emotions? I'll be hanging out with a friend. He's like, all right, man, take it easy. I'm going to go work on arms and back. I'm like, cool. I'm going to go work on letting go of the past and accepting love. <laughs> right? Everybody loves the gym. Ooh, the gym makes me feel sexy. Well, you know what else is sexy? Not being a walking red flag. Right? <laughs> Nobody cares about your abs if you're the guy having a meltdown at Chili's, right? <laughs>
That shit always works sometimes. Jesus, fuck you, love this shit. I don't like, I don't even like saying that it's cold when I think that it's cold out because there's always some asshole around you. I, I, you know what I'm talking about. There's someone in this room. If I'm like, oh, it's really cold outside, someone's initial instinct when I say that, they so bad, I'm like, fuck it, think this is cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do, because it is. I don't know what happened in high school, but let it go. Let it go. Just let it go. It's cold. I'm not saying this is the coldest I've ever been. I'm not like, oh my God! When do we eat each other? What is it, 58? Ha! Ah! I'm just saying it's cold. Guys, <laughs> shit ain't cold. Put a jacket on, short sleeves. I go short sleeves in this kind of temperature. How else can I non-verbally tell people that I'm fearless? <laughs> Fucking cold and you know it's cold. This isn't cold. This ain't cold, dude. Should have been here three years ago. They always reference another time. You should have been here three years ago. That's when it was cold. This? I fuck on my porch in this. Okay? I porch fuck in this. I can't come unless I'm naked on my porch having sex in these Hawaii-esque temperatures. <laughs> this this is it, you. Oh shit, here we go. Ball of paper up the newspaper and throw the newspaper on the floor. Mm -hmm. Fuck his whole asshole up, you know what I'm saying? Then you yeah. open that asshole one more time. Open it again, open that asshole again. Oh, step out his ass. And leave that motherfucker wide open so he know you've been there. And now for something completely different. And coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, I'm super excited to be joined by my friends out of the fuck out of Wisconsin, for Christ's sake, out of Cheese Town, if you don't mind my noticing. I'm a cheese fan, so you know. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for joining me, Casca Robbie. How are you guys doing today? Great. Thank you for having doing us. Good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we're excited to be on here, man. Super happy, man. Uh, you know, I, one of the greatest things about doing this show is being able to talk to awesome motherfuckers like you about metal on a regular basis. What more could you ask for? You know what I mean? Right. So so I'll, I'll start with the stupid, obvious question. How fucking cold is it there right now? It's so Crazy. cold. <laughs> I On my way to work this morning, my car said, I think it said 17 below. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. that's insanity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think breathe. <laughs> my car would be like, fuck you, I'm not starting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mine was pretty sassy when I tried starting it. Yeah, so. man. Shit. Well, although, to be honest, my ass would do the same thing. So, my ass <laughs> my, something my ass and car have in common, apparently. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I know it's a weird time in the world and being what it is, but I, I, has there ever been a year where you've looked more forward to spring in your lifetime than this motherfucker right here? No, oh, I, I don't think so. Ugh. Especially since we kind of like we missed last spring, right? Completely. So, and yeah, summer pretty... and fall, and I mean, what? The yeah, fuck? yeah. Crazy, crazy. I am a bit of a hermit even before the pandemic, but I, I even I got to get outside sometimes. I mean, I'm just yeah. my conference and shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm the same way, but man, yeah, it it, uh, it affects you just you not being able to go anywhere you know it's crazy man we're not supposed to live like this brother no, yeah. no. well you know I, I i'm forgive my i'm so familiar actually at this point with Corey that i forgo for with the fucking introductions man introduce yourselves you guys i'm sorry that forgive me metalheads <laughs> hey me, i'm man. megan vocalist for casket robbery <laughs> <laughs> and i'm Corey. i play guitar my that is completely my bad metalomaniac see me and Corey <laughs> talk metal all the time so i just lost right into it but but yeah, I am a big fan of you guys, man. And tell me a little bit about the formation of this project, if you don't mind. Um, you want to do that one? Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Do that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so the band started with with me and uh, uh, the previous singer, and um, honestly, it started as just kind of like a recording studio project uh, for fun, and it just like took off, kind of like people were into the songs we were making and um that's that's really how it grew um and then when did you join was it 
three or four years ago? No. I think it's almost four years ago. Yeah, I think now. I made a note. Yeah, four years. 2017, I made a note. My goodness. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Metalomania does their homework. Don't tell people. <laughs> That's awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that, that was the EP that Megan jumped in yeah. on. Um, right. And, and we we put that out, and, and we've been touring uh, pretty pretty frequently since megan joined um oh, yeah so that that's that's what kind of solidified the whole uh just going for it playing music all across the country that is basic that's more or less when we became aware of the band you know the we started in 2016 i believe you guys came entered our window the first time in 2017 ish so right about when megan joined i believe and uh, man, I, we're big fans. Ever since that moment, big fans. Yay! Awesome, man. We break things in the studio all the time to you guys. The bill's coming. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. 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 You know? I support but, that. Fuck yeah! But the, the, <laughs> hey, we say all the time. We hope to be the soundtrack to breaking things, man. Sometimes you gotta, yes. if your eyes and your mind work, you have to break things. Sometimes it's just right. Uh, and uh, well, and when you f started this project, was the aim? Because let's be honest, you guys embrace some darkness, if you don't mind my noticing, some dark subject matter, some some dark feeling, which I love. I eat it up with a spoon. Um, what led to that? Was that a similar mindset right from the start? Was you know, were you guys like, man, let's just fucking bloody it up in this bitch? What well, you know? <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the ingredients. Yeah, uh, I guess originally it was like. Um... Uh, if you kind of follow my backstory, I've been in bands with uh, a lot of melodic content um, and less less on the dark side, more on the melodic side. So when I started Casket, it was like I just was writing these really heavy, um, uh, chunky, dark riffs. I wanted to do something different. Um, and then the, the singer at the time, uh, he, he was just into that. Like It was like a vibe. I, and, and that's kind of how we... we Keep, kept it going through all these years is like um the band is more about the vibe um and right from the start it was a it's just like a vibe like the lyrics and the guitar mesh together um and i that's how i write a lot of the riffs um and why and all of us stick when we write to stuff it's like okay what are the lyrics and let's let's write a soundtrack to uh what the lyrics are saying um, I yeah, as opposed no, yeah. to the other way around and that's that's stays true today it's it's like i megan's got these these great ideas and i i just kind of check out the lyrics and it's like all right cool let's let's write a song to that let's build around it yeah. so so you start with the image of where you're going with it and then fucking yeah add the wallpaper to that bitch i got you yeah yeah it's all a vibe yeah yeah Fuck yeah i love the vibe well, and it's a like i said it's a very dark and kind of kick you in the face vibe man it's aggressive you know yeah which yeah, and the, the new album is definitely uh is definitely dark <laughs> um it's 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 very dark yeah well hey that's you know most of us metalheads that's where we grew up at that's where right? we, you know, we, we gravitate to this shit you know we yep. watch dark movies we listen to dark m m music we read dark books you know, we sit in dark rooms and smoke big, fat, dark joints. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, yeah. that's what we do. And, and while we do it, we listen to you fucking guys, by the Bye. way. So, <laughs> so well, and uh, of course, the elephant in the room is that COVID has completely shut down live at venues and shows. And, you know, how, how fuck, I, I know it's an obvious question, but what are you doing to get through, man? How bad does that suck? And what are you doing to fill the time? Um, yeah, it, it didn't start hitting until a few months after it. Um, we had like four tours scheduled last year. Um, and as like, we're still like holding on and holding out hope that these are gonna happen. And you know, you know, realistically they're not, and you're just holding out that they are. Um, I guess myself personally, with how heavily we had been touring and playing shows, um, I didn't realize how much of an outlet that was for me and how much I needed it. So the past year was, it was definitely a really, really hard time, really dark, not having that outlet. L luckily we, um, we have amazing fans, like so amazing. And 
with that, we've been able to like really, yeah, thank you. Like we, we love our fans and, and like, we feel their love in return. They've really gotten us through this past year with everything. Um, even like our, all of us together are this tiny little community that is really has each other's backs and we've got to put some, a whole lot of time and effort into getting the album completely finished. Um, we've got to gotten to jumpstart our Patreon to like connect with fans that way as we're not playing shows yet. And then just really get ourselves solidified and ready with new material and all of that. So when this does open up, we can hit the ground running just like we had been before. Like there was no break. So it's definitely been tough, um, and and we've had to uh, maneuver our way through all of it and be kind of um, adapting to it. But but yeah, it, I mean, we're excited for we're excited to get back on the road. <laughs> oh, I can't wait! I can't wait. You know, there does finally somewhat seem to be a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. We're starting to hear rumors that. Some venues might open up to this, you know, various different degrees, and hopefully that's true. Yes. But, good Lord, we need it so bad. But I've noticed a running theme throughout the year, especially for performers, if you, you know, that this is medicinal. I mean, it's more than just an outlet of music. It is medicinal for the individuals behind the music. It is something that you need to get out there and fucking push that shit out of you, you know. So are, are, are you kicking walls? What are you doing in the meantime? Oh, it's it's been hard. Um, I never I never realized how much I needed to be on that stage, being that crazy little demonic creature every night. Um, but I do really need it. So well, yeah, it's well, been well. like right, like trying to channel it through other artistic means just to get it out. Um, but yeah. I, oh. I really do want to like headbang and kick shit and like scream in people's faces again. And well, yeah. we need it as fans. <laughs> we need it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, there's only so many episodes of fucking, you know, Cobra Kai you can watch. You need fucking <laughs> basket robbery to fucking break things. You know, you need the fucking yeah. soundtrack to commiserate your, this, it, it's been a brutal year in so many ways. Yeah. And you need the soundtrack to fucking go along with that, you know? And that's what you guys provide, man. It's important that you know that from me as a fan, as a listener. That's that's what Thank that's you. that's yeah. what level shit that is to us, man, for real. Uh, yeah, that's that's awesome, man. That's that's so good to hear. Like, especially through this year, struggling so hard. And, and, and like, yeah, like for me trying to, I don't know, man, the past, uh, my, my whole life since I was a kid, I've played live music, you know? And now it's like I don't have another outlet. It's, I can't right. find anything that that equals that for me. So, uh, yeah, dude, um, crazy. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, you referenced being young, so let's go there, man. What what were your influences when you were young? When you were when you were cutting your teeth and realizing, yeah, this pop music shit ain't for me. That, that's not my gig. <laughs> Who were the uh, bands that made you realize that? Who were the? Um, so much. Let's see. For Lots me. of classic rock stuff. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Lots of Ozzy. For me, I can tr I can trigger it to a few bands. It was like Def Leppard was the first one um, that showed me like you can play like sweet these sweet solos like like Def Leppard or not. You know they're 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 not quite metal, but uh, they Dude, opened up to that. I honestly didn't realize you were fifty. I didn't at all. <laughs> No, <laughs> man. Dude, I remember, You'd be surprised, dude. I I, uh, I remember when I was a kid, uh, my friend brought over a Def Leppard VHS tape. It was a uh, Def Leppard Historia, and man, we watched that over and over and over. And, and at first, I was like, you know, I'm just making fun of their their hair. Like they started with brown hair, and then it got more and more blonde as the <laughs> as yeah, the that's progressed. a well, and more and more pop too. But you know, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I cut my teeth on teeth on Def Leppard, man. I'm old yeah. though. See, I got an excuse. I don't know what the hell yours is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I got hooked, man. Those solos are wicked. And then yeah, and then from there, just heavier and heavier. And and you know, it was like Megadeth was a big one uh, that that really spun me in, into that heavy side. And then it was uh, Children of Bodom for death metal. And yeah, and, fuck yeah. Those are like kind of like gateway bands for me. 
That's awesome. And what about you, Megan? What were your influences coming in? Definitely, like, all the classic rock that, like, my parents used to listen to. Lots of Ozzy. Oh. Um, then it kind of slowly morphed into, like, as I got heavier, it was, like, some alternative stuff. And then very melodic, um, like, kill switch engage. Things like, yeah, like... I'm someone that really, really loves to sing. Before I even was screaming, I I have sang forever. So I love the the duality of that and being able to sing and scream at the same time. Um, Fuck yeah. So that and then it kind of just like progressively got harder, <laughs> and and all of a sudden I'm listening to to Cannibal Corpse and and Cattle Decap and and all of that. <laughs> I might make an argument that that's what life does to you, see, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's an, it, the natural progression to your, you know, functioning mind in this fucking world, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I tell you what, let's give everybody a piece of some music. Can you hang out with me? Let's play a couple of jams and we'll, and we'll keep talking metal if that's cool. Absolutely. Awesome. awesome. Well, I, I'll let you set up your song, but we're going to open up this little two-piece with some R Hat. R Hat is a badass band right out of the Ukraine. I'm loving this fucking debut full-length release, by the way. So get your drink or your bong hit on, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, Dead Life is the name of the album, and Dead Life is the name of the song we're going to play. And then we're going to play some Casket Robbery. What, what are we going to feed up to everyone tonight? We're going to play From Hell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, appropriately enough, the name of my autobiography. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> hey, I think we have similar writers or something. Or yeah, at, yeah. Or at least similar people holding voodoo dolls of us. Sons of bitches. <laughs> Well, cool. Let's play these gems. Don't go nowhere. I'm going to be hanging out with Megan and Corey talking metal on the other side of breaking some things. Kurt likes to brag that he's in an open relationship. And by that, he means all the cases against him haven't been closed yet. <laughs> Yeah. 
How to get snacks and explore. What was that noise? outside and you saw what was happening, you saw what was going on, what were your thoughts? Oh my gosh, it can, you know, I didn't ever think it was going to happen to us. Do you know how this fire started? Yes, I do. It was because of my cousin. And I don't want to mention no names. Your cousin? Yes. Um, and you say you think your cousin started this, uh, do you know how or why? He's mad because he couldn't, he can't get with me. I'm married to my husband. And it's a long story. Hey, this is Megan from Casket Robbery, and you're listening to Metalomania with The Crypt and Scully.
I've got more stuff if you want to see it. And that's what bad assery sounds like right there, goddammit. A little casket robbery, man. I, dude, yeah, what the fuck? The soundtrack to my life, you understand? <laughs> that's what's happening. So <laughs> where did the name come from? Where, what, what casket robber? Where'd, you, where'd the name, where'd you pull it? Um, that was just something that kind of just, uh, then in the, uh, when we first started the band, we we're just kicking around names for a while. And, uh, that one, we, we had a few different ones, but once, uh, once casket robbery popped up, we were like, that's it. Like that, it kind of encompasses everything. We, the vibe of everything. Fuck yeah. You know, so but nothing, nothing too crazy. Not a crazy story. For that <laughs> one. No, well, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't from you following me around in the, and late at night. That's all. So yeah. <laughs> uh, as long as I'm clear, we're good. So <laughs> that's good shit, man. Good shit. I, I'm a fan. I, and, and metal maniacs out there. You just heard a reason why I'm a fan. So make sure you support the band, go to the Facebook page, go to the YouTube, go to the, you know, what What else you guys got? You got the YouTube, you got the Facebook. What, are, you, are you on the Instagram and the Twitter? We have everything. Yeah. We literally have everything. Okay. <laughs> Including a cool fucking fan group on Facebook that I'm a part of. By yes, the way. yes. Yeah, that is. Uh, join that one. That's our, like, that's where we hang out the most. Um, and the casket it's community. Like, yeah. Not not like a an, an super annoying group. It's just, it's all of our fans. And it's this really like cool, collective, safe space for everyone. Everyone has each other's back. You don't have to worry about people getting offended or like posting dumb shit. And um, we put all of our like news in there. Um, um, yeah, it's called yeah. Basket Robbery's Coven of Souls. Coven um, of Souls. Yes, check indeed. that out. Well, and it's quite an accomplishment in today's day and age just to put a group together that doesn't fucking cry every third post, which you've done. That's a good, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. 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 We've kept, I mean, we have some rules in there and everyone abides by them. And I just, I love, especially this last year, the amount of support um, musically and mentally in that group um, just blows my mind. Everyone, like, actively cares about each other and yeah. um you can it's, post something in there having a hard time or anything and know that there's literally always someone that's going to listen or help or anything like that yeah. like it's, it's it's really cool it's more like a like a metal lifestyle group i would say uh, to uh, to be honest i mean we we obviously post casket stuff but it's uh just kind of anything you know people are dealing with well and to and let's be honest, in 2020 and into 2021 so far, holy shit, the plates are full for so many people right now and what they're yeah. dealing with. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that community angle is more important now, in my opinion, than ever, especially considering we've lost a little bit of that in-person stuff. So if it can be supplemented somewhat in these, you know, communities that we're building, I think I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. You know? yeah. And most of them have minimal rules. I apologize for, for continually breaking the rules of posting pictures of my butt. I'm seeking help for it. I, I got a yeah, doctor gotta, appointment, you know. You gotta take those down every time. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's a me thing. It's a me thing. But <laughs> but you know, so well, uh, let me ask you some get to know you questions if I might, man. What are you binge watching to get through the pandemic? What anything in particular or um so I had already watched all of Shameless, and I kept telling Corey that he needs to watch it with me. So we are rewatching Shameless. Awesome. Okay, I love Shameless. Yeah. Um. What else? We watched. We watched I've, Cobra Kai. Twice. I've watched it twice. Twice. <laughs> um, um. Sabrina. Oh, how's Sabrina? Uh, Somebody else told me I should watch that recently. Yeah. It is, it's really messed up. I love it. Cool. It's awesome. really dark. Awesome. Um, I like it. Darker the better. Give me some dark. Yeah, yeah. it's super dark. I love it. Uh, our our guitar player Troy, um, he's gotten me in kind of on the anime kick. Um, so oh, I've been watching cool. Attack on Titan. Uh, oh, here, good really lord! Really brutal stuff. That's one good. of our one of our cohorts in behind the scenes here, Bongwood, who was actually the bass player for Silence the Requiem. Um, Good Lord, yeah. Don't say that 
attack on Titan thing around them. You'll be talking about that shit for twelve fucking hours straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so it's good, man. It's it is really good. <laughs> He's got conspiracy <laughs> theories behind it and everything. Good lord. Oh gosh, I haven't gotten that deep into it yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's good shit. So, uh, are are you a big horror movie freaks? Yep. Yeah. See, like, it comes with the territory. Um, that's pretty much the the basis for our band. Like it's it's horror based. It's that's where we take pretty much all of our inspiration from. So you can't see our living room right now, but it. I mean, there are horror movie posters, uh, decor everywhere. Uh -huh. uh, really, our whole house, really. But yeah, in the living room especially. Um, oh, that's good. We shit. go to conventions. Yeah, we I, like. Yeah, I've been uh, actually on the binge watching thing. I've started to collect uh, pretty heavily the old VHS tapes. So I've been watching a lot of older horror movies. Um, I, I can't think of any newer movies I've seen um, oh. lately. But I've I've got all the, like the old stuff. I, There's I just some got, like Netflix ones that are yeah. not bad. Like, you you just gave me a great idea, though. I'm telling you, I'm gonna have both of you come back on in, in just a few weeks, and let's talk classic horror movies. Let's out of the casket horror movies from the casket with casket. Yes. What's up? We love that. We are game. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love talking horror. I, I I am of the belief that metalheads tend to be horror movie freaks. And my next, do you have a cat? Is there a cat running around in there somewhere? We've got two of them yeah. that are here. <laughs> One it, has one eye. <laughs> oh, look, see, broken cats is even more of a metal thing. Right? Like, oh, you heard she, your name. Yeah, she actually just popped up. <laughs> yep, see, look, there you go. I, it's no, my theory see. that metalheads are, are cat-loving horror movie freaks as well. It's Let's fucking, you know, it's, it's part yeah. of the char characteristic traits, you know? Uh, that's good shit, man. All right, well, you got I got you on record. You're going to come back. We're going to talk horror movies. Yes, weeks, right? yes, yes 100%. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it. it's already named itself, you know. Uh, badass mo horror movies from the casket with casket robbery. I love it. We're yeah, let's that. do it. I love that, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'll be getting to work on that as soon as we're done talking today. Cool. So that's good shit, man. So, well, and I guess what's next, man? I, I don't want the pass that over before we get to some more blistering jams for some people, but what's next? I know that we really don't know yet what we're looking at as far as live shows go. I, I got my fingers crossed for the fall. We'll see. Yep. But, I mean, is that kind of really where your, your mindset is now? Like, I, I can't wait to attack a, a, a stage? Or are you working on new stuff? Yeah. Uh, where, where are you? It's it's hard. It's, um, yeah, like, what? It's not that we haven't had show offers, but um, our stance right now is like, we're going to do it when it's safe for everyone, um, but when it makes sense for everyone. And that's really important to us. So we're just staying as active as we possibly can until that happens. So, so that we're ready as soon as we can, we're going to go. We've, we're constantly in talks with, with our booking people. Um, with venues, with promoters, things like that. Um, we're we're sitting on this album right now, this full length album, and really, it's because we we want to release it and be able to hit the road with it. You know that that's a that's a big thing for us. Oh. So we're just we're doing what we can right now, and and yeah, we're we're ready. Yeah. We are we are very <laughs> very ready and and anxiously awaiting. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're we're writing a bunch of music in the meantime. So, yeah. uh, I mean, we've got the album done, but we also have a separate single um, that we plan on putting out um, yep. soon here. And then um, we've got other stuff written, too. We're just going to keep writing um, <laughs> while we're waiting, you know. So right on, there'll be yeah. enough music to, to put out. Yeah, the next time you guys hit the stage, you're going to be on that motherfucker for two and a half hours. That ain't another problem with that. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my neck is gonna hurt for like a week. Uh, I want to be there. <laughs> I want to be there. Hello, I would like to be there for real. You know, you guys ain't that far away. We're right here in Washington D.C. We're not too far from you. We can work. That's out. not that far. Yeah, we'll make it happen. We gotta make it happen. Fuck yeah. 
Well, that's kick-ass, man. I appreciate the fuck out of you joining me here at Metal of Mania, you guys. I'm a big, big fan of the band and of you two specifically. So. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you rock, dude. Thanks for having us on. We really oh, it. my mind is already writing this horror thing we're doing, so yes. hey. Okay. Enter yeah, the fold. I am here for it. Regulars, man. I'm going to make you regulars. We Rad. will do that. Oh yeah, for 100%. sure. Hundred percent. We love chatting, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh man, my, hey, I you you let me talk metal or shit they don't let me talk about on the show. Well, I'll tell you about that later. But, <laughs> nice. no, but I can do it all day, baby. So you know, <laughs> I, I got no shortage of talking in me. <laughs> my my dad used to say that dude got enough mouth for three sets of teeth. So. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, you guys rock, man. I appreciate you hanging out with us here at Metal of Mania. We're going to punch everybody in the face with some music right now. And uh, everybody, go right now. Support Casket Robbery. Join the fucking group on fa social media. Go to the YouTube. Subscribe. Show the fucking love. Yes. Thank you so, so much. Love you motherfuckers, man. For real. We love man. you. From the guts. Thank you, man. Well, I believe that seals it, doesn't it? We have the coolest metal friends around here at Metalomania. And we are proud as fuck to count you Metalomaniacs among them. Thank you for hanging out and supporting the show. And we're not done yet. Let's keep the train rolling. Thank you very much to Casket Robbery. Support them. They're a badassery. And we will be getting them back in here to talk about some cool things in the very near future, I promise. So on the metal train rolls. Into Ethereum coming up next. Ethereum has a brand new single out called Primordial Woods. Melodic Death from Greece formed in 2013. We're going to check out this new single. It's badass. And then Zaraz is coming up behind that. Zaraz has got a video for their song Zombie Kids. And it's coming at your face. You're going to enjoy it. And I believe I hear Scully in the green room right now. So after these two jams, maybe I can drag her in here to say goodnight to everybody before we get out of here with a couple more chance on the back end of this thing. So 2003 motors on. Thanks again to Casket Robbery. Thanks again to Josh. Thanks again to Guillermo from Angelus. You motherfuckers kick ass. Metal on soldiers. Hey girls, wood delivery for you. Thanks Rico. Thanks. <laughs> yeah.
Hashtag fucked up shit in the woods. Kayla, what the hell? Seriously? Are you just gonna stare at her? It was weird. Good weird. She tasted like... Well, it's just another day at the public cesspool. I mean, public pool where everybody gets out and gets to swim and everybody else's urine, feces, and whatnot. Sharon with the flip and the wig stays intact to the diving board. What is going on? It looks like the diving board has like a goatee or beard now. Let's take a quick look at the replay. Sharon showing a great amount of courage here tonight, jumping into this uh, water or lake full of feces and urine. And you could tell that the wig is a lot smarter because the wig's like, I'm not going in there. I'm not going to catch no hepatitis today. Mm -hmm. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy ride.
tried to drop acid or are they really singing Britney Spears with a zombie? This is where you come for all of your metal friends to hang out, man. All of our metal friends seem to be doing that more and more often and, and more and more often. And I couldn't be more appreciative of it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome, guys. Very much fun. You kick ass. Very, very much fun. Makes it fun. The show is so much fun. It is. It yeah. is. I've, I've, I, I got to be honest with you. I very much enjoy these last few shows. They've become some of my favorite that we've ever done. Well, you, you know, love Countdowns. To Blake and I you do. I, I, do like... I dig that. <laughs> You know, let's make a list. This breaks of our stuff. You always make fun of me for wanting to make a list. Right? You're all about making a list. I know. So. And you know what? We're going to do it again next week, too, because. Oh, you already got next week. We're going to bring in Henry from Pursuit. Okay. And, and we're going to bring in our buddy Brandon from um, Cruel Bomb out of Pennsylvania. And we're going to talk video games. We're going to bring. <laughs> no, we're, all what? three of us are going to make <laughs> our talk list. talk you into that. Uh, Brandon. Brandon's a video Brandon's game dude. And okay. I love him, by the way, man. Cruel so Bomb. Fun. You better support both of these bands. Oh, man, my God. Shooting. You are going to fucking die laughing about his. Well, that's what's going to be fun about it because so. they're both going to have very cool and very modern video games probably and I'm going to be breaking out they're Pac-Man gonna, on you bitches so they're going to be surprised with what you're saying yeah yeah they're going to be like what I'm dude? not going to be surprised with 19, what you're saying that's 1980 something bro so let's yeah. make a bet how many of their video games will, will I, I even know, know. oh, oh well, yeah. you know right. well, yeah, you, I, you're right you're right. That's yeah. going to be fun. Okay. I am looking forward to it, though. It's going to be fun. I, What's the over-under? Let's let the people bet on <laughs> right. it. <laughs> of their lists of 10, which is 20 total probably. All right. We'll give them a couple for crossover. So let's say there'll be 15. How many will Scully and I know of their 15 of the of Henry and of Brandon's video game list next week? It's going to be fun. Yeah. Come hang out with us. Sure. We'll turn it into a piece. We'll put that on Utreon. We'll talk video games. It'll be fun. Okay. You know, I'm an old school video game guy. I'm not a new school video game guy, but I'm hoping that brings kind of a different perspective to the conversation. So Shows how old you are. Well, yeah, that too. I do. He is old, guys. He of long dong and old school video game skills. I can testify for sure. He is long dong. Old. Thanks, babe. <laughs> So, but yeah, that's going to be fun. So tune in with us next week for that. And as a matter of fact, also next week, we're going to be talking to uh, Belushi Speedball, which I am so fucking excited about talking to them cats. Okay. I love this new release. I love their videos. I love their energy. I love their style. I love, I'm going to tell you a story about our, our talking to them and our, inter- our engagement with them leading up to our interview, which is very, very funny to me. Okay. I, I just get a real kick out of this band, man. I enjoy the fuck out of them, and I hope you support them and, and come check out and watch our interview with them next week. Okay. Belushi Speedball. A lot of fun. We talked crossover tonight. They're a band that has embraced that crossover feel. So next year when we come back and do another crossover list, you may very well find Belushi Speedball on my list. Okay, that's awesome. Digging it. Digging okay. it, digging it. So come hanging out with us next week. All right. So thank you again tonight for everyone who came out. Thank you to Josh for doing our list with us tonight and breaking down crossover. Okay, yes. A lot of fun, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you to um, everyone else we talked to. Thank you to Guillermo from Angelus Apertrita for hanging out, man. I'm such a huge fan of him and of that band and very, very appreciative of them giving us some time. Thank you to Megan and Corey from Casket Robbery. Enjoy the fuck out of talking to you guys. Come back. Let's do some more talk. Let's talk some horror. And, uh, Looking forward to that, too. So yeah. we're going to be bringing Nick from Thralls of Metal in to talk some stuff. We're going to be talking to our boy Tom Nando from Metal Lab. We're going to be talking to – the list grows on, man. we got a lot of, little, lot of metal friends coming in to help us do the show over the next few months, and we're okay. looking forward to all of it. Awesome. Killer? I also want to remind everybody to like, follow, and subscribe Yo, to the bands. Man. That's the um, reason we do the show. why we're here. Right. It Support really the scene. Um, like them. Follow them, subscribe to them. Those are all very easy, very free things that you can do. Yes, it is. Um, but while you're there, maybe buy a shirt. Pick up some know. merch. I right. a hat, a t-shirt. I got um, a brand new casket whatever. robbery shirt coming, man. Can't oh, wait. Looking forward to yeah. that. So, okay. Yeah. Support the scene, guys. Help out the bands. Keep them alive. Fuck yeah! I couldn't. So. Th- th- it's never been more important than it is right now, man. Yeah. Especially if they get ready to cut this fucking check. They're talking about sending another stimulus check. 35 bucks of that can go to a t-shirt from one of your oh, favorite yeah, bands for awesome. sure you know so yeah there you go there you and go. keep your eyes out Bandcamp is often doing these you know um uh no charging for uh shipping and handling fridays and shit like that so keep your oh, eyes nice. open okay take advantage that's really cool the band camp to do that man right? so i'm a yeah, fan of them i hear a lot about them taking advantage a- Fucking twenty five dollar T shirt, and then you end up paying fifty. Yeah, because yeah, you're paying shipping. And oh, I will tell you, there's been several occasions where I have clicked on a T shirt, like, oh yeah, I like that band. I'm gonna pick up that T shirt, and it's, oh, it's only twenty bucks, even that's awesome. And then you get to the checkout, and it's fifty dollars. Like, dude, I'm paying more for shipping to him than I am the T shirt. I just for can't a T-shirt do it. Too. I can't it's not do like it. it's a delicate thing that needs to be shipped lightly. Right, you know, right. it fucking makes it, it sticks right. in my crawl. So. 
But anyway. But, but when yeah. you can, please do. And you know, I plan to catch up with Lorenz, uh, our buddy Lorenz from Trader, and also he's in the Reset band that's got a brand new release. So okay. lots of cool things are coming. Fuck yeah. You're going to want to hang out with us here for mm. your metal. <laughs> We're going to bring you some metal here. Okay, anyway. Uh, let's get the fuck out of here. We uh, did just play some kick-ass songs that Ethereum and Zarazo. Again, Scully makes it easy for you to support and follow all these bands on our playlist tonight. That's on our social media, on the Facebook thing. You can follow their YouTube, all of that. You know, these lists that we make are very much fun, but the point of the show is to follow the bands. So. Right. All right, and let's close with two more badass bands then, shall we? All right. What you got? Well, we got, we're going to close with this, the, the first of these two is the band's called Volvodinia. The album's called Aborting Pestilence. The I'm sorry, the album is called Societal Lobotomization. The song is Aborting Pestilence. Okay. And this band is out of South Africa, which has a growing kick-ass scene for metal right now. But they're named after a condition in which the opening of a woman's vagina always hurts for no discernible medical reason. Oh, my God. Yeah. What? What? Say the name of the band again. Nightmare. Volvo, Volvo Dynia, I believe. Volvo Dynia. Volvo oh Dynia is the band. Oh, my God. That w is... What a nightmare. That would be... What a nightmare. So, what do you do about that? I, I think they just drug your vagina, and then you can't feel the good stuff and either. you can't feel anything. Yeah, they just put that oh, motherfucker to sleep. That's... They treat your vagina like a fucking horse with a broken leg and put it down. <laughs> Ain't that a bitch? Volvo Dania put the vagina down. That's, that's like, but that was funny. Well, I that was wouldn't funny worse, wish that on my worst enemy. Oh, yeah, that's horrific. It's so terrible. But you know what isn't horrific is this band. They're badass, and you're going to enjoy it, man. Fucking killer song and uh, a boring question. And then we're going to close the show with Anime Torment, man. I've told you about this band before because I'm a huge fan of them. Uh, death metal band from Chechia. They got a brand new EP. It's fucking set to kill the world, and we're going to help them do that, man. We're going to throw in a fucking apocalypse assist <laughs> because I love it. Void Terror is the release. Lure is the name of the song, and we'll catch you cunts next week for another episode of this Metalomania thing, episode 204. Wow. With Belushi Speedball and our friend Henry from Pursuit, our friend Brandon from Cruel Bomb, talking video games, talking metal. What more could you ask for? I even think we're going to drag Scully's ass in here a little bit again next week, so... Cool. Ready I'll see to you. do it? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out. Oh, <laughs> thank you for doing metal with us. You guys rock, man. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Much love. Much metal. I'm an artist. I mean, Michelangelo worked in stone, Van Gogh worked in oil. I work in pussy. He works <laughs> in pussy. I'm going to bring the whole fucking diseased, corrupt temple down on your head. It's got to be biblical. Watch out!
If he moves that car, I'll eat my own pussy. Atta girl. I can't believe you just made that assumption. You should be ashamed of yourself and your family. So tell me what does your decide? Expect to do it from us. We can tell you what we are for you. I didn't like your speech. It didn't really inspire me. What? He called me a pussy and nobody calls me pussy, so... Okay. Fuck off, pussy! <clears throat> this just in. Scientists have discovered that once you've been infected by metalomania, there is no cure. Contact Scully right away for more and more metal to feed the dragon. Hey, this is Carl from Now, and you're listening to Metalomania. Hey, this is Hans from Once Awake. You are watching Metalomania with The Crypt and Scully. Fuck yeah!